Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto had RPG gamer ability. Uzumaki Naruto wakes up one day to find out that his life has been turned into a RPG game, thanks to his gamer ability. What should he do about this? Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 18. Graduation several months later Academy Classroom. Kanahagakur no Sato name. Uzumaki Naruto class. The gamer level. 17th next level. 0% level cap. Class up for further level progression. Title. Academy student plus 25% EXP to LV10 age. 12 HP. 2000 2000 CP. 2200 2200 STR. 43 STA. 46 plus 1 O Dex. 40 Int. 41 plus 5 WIS. 37 Lock. Uzumaki Naruto was practically trembling in nervous anticipation as he waited for the start of the practical portion of the final exams, his eyes constantly darting towards his open status window. The last few months had been both immensely gratifying and supremely irritating. Gratifying in that he had trained himself as hard as he could and had shown real and noticeable progress with everything he'd worked on. Irritating in that the damned level cap had forced him to limit his training to just honing and improving the skills he'd acquired as well as those few he gained while simply working toward his goal. Thanks to Uruka, he had learned the traveling 10 and had managed to max all 10 out within two months, mostly due to the fact that each had a level cap of only 20, which was apparently the usual for E-ranked Jutsu. A pleasant surprise was that mastering the Futon and Doden Jutsu had leveled up his natural Futon affinity and secondary Doden skills by one. Also, it seemed maxing out low ranking Jutsu like that generates a brand new Jutsu on the next level up. Doden. Anna had given him the D rank Doden. Otoshiana Earth Style. Pitfall, a Jutsu that was basically a larger variant of the original that was big enough to trap a fully grown man, if only barely. Doden. Yumaru had given him Doden. Dashikuzer, Earth Style. Mudslide, a jutsu that sent a wave of mud at his enemy, while Doden. Wana gave him another version of Otoshiana called Doden. Kushizashi no Otoshiana, Earth Style. Skewer Pitfall, that was only slightly higher on the scale than the original, being a high D ranked jutsu, as it was simply adding small, earthen spikes to the bottom of the pit. Futon. Soyokes gave him Futon. Yaka's Wind Style. Arrow Wind, a weak offensive attack that formed arrows from the air around him and sent them flying at the enemy. Futon. Shoshut gave him another non-combat jutsu. Futon. Suzuka's Wind Style. Cool Breeze. It circulated the air and lowered its temperature slightly to alleviate heat. Naruto supposed that it would be useful if he had to go to Kei's no Kuni or a similar location for a mission. Sweden. Ketsuro gave him, Sweden. Yudichi, Water Style. Evening Squall, another fairly weak attack jutsu that formed multiple small darts of water from the air around him and fired them at the enemy. Sweden. Roki, gave him, Sweden. Susho, Water Style. Water Crystal, a personal defense jutsu. It created a shield of water about the size of a dinner plate that he could control to intercept attacks. The two fire types of the traveling ten, Kaden, Kisu, and Kaden, Habana, simply gave a level each to Kaden, Hotarubi, which was fine. As he was taking his Gigi's advice, it was fine. He could earn a third elemental affinity later on. Finally, Raiden, Sidenki, had given him, Raiden, Denko Seka, Lightning Style, Lightning Snowflakes, and Odd Jutsu that, as its name suggested, fired a dozen or so snowflakes of lightning at the enemy, each dealing only a tiny amount of damage but also having a small chance to cause temporary paralysis as a result of muscle spasms. He had been forced to show Uruka sensei the doctored scroll that Mizuki had given him in order to get a proper scroll and boy, had Uruka sensei been pissed at Mizuki. He had gone off to report the man with almost indecent haste and had come back looking, if not satisfied, then mollified by whatever his Gigi had said. His study dates with Sakura had continued, although he hadn't gained any int from the sessions within a bit over a month after learning about the QB. On the bright side, he was now halfway up the ladder of neutral to friendly relationship-wise, not as far as he'd like but he'd take it. 
Naruto had also tried to be nice to Hinata. Emphasis on. Tried. Because the girl fainted if he was too nice to her. Seriously, the first time he called her, Hinata-chan, to her face, she turned crimson, squeaked and fainted. How the hell were you supposed to talk to someone who did that? At a guess, it was her, shy maiden, title that she had, her second title at that. He had scanned people with, observe, and found that a lot of people, especially members of the shinobi forces, had a second title. That he hadn't been able to see them until only a month or so ago, which was likely because the, observe, skills level had been too low. The civilians either hadn't, classed up, to earn a second title, like Tenten's parents, or weren't a member of an important clan, like Hinata was. It made Naruto wonder what high-ranking people, like his Gigi, had title-wise. All he got when he casually observed him was a screen full of question marks and only a single title. As the Uzumaki boy doubted that his Gigi was in any way inferior to Hayuga Hanada, he had to guess that the Hokage had at least the same number of titles that she did, perhaps even a third or more. There's so much about my power that the help section either doesn't mention or skates over. He thought with a frown. It's like the stupid thing wants me to learn things as I go rather than having all knowledge straight off the bat. Down at the front of the classroom, the two Chunin, Uruka and Mizuki, were marking papers, which made Naruto grin somewhat. Thanks to his increased int and wis, all thanks to Sakura, he could have passed the test with full marks, but he chose not to. His scores over the past year had steadily risen to be just above average and it would be odd for someone who'd been dead last at the start of the year to get a perfect score out of nowhere. Plus, he wanted anyone that got their hands on his files to underestimate him. So, he had made enough deliberate errors to earn a passing grade just a bit above the normal curve, but not spectacularly so. He hadn't gotten any of the questions regarding the Hokage wrong though, such blasphemy was beyond his ability to accomplish. As the man who would surpass all the previous cage, he had to have a thorough knowledge of all his predecessors in order to fully and completely surpass them. Okay class. Uruka called as he stood up. It's time for your taijutsu and shurikenjutsu tests. Follow Mizuki and me outside so we can conduct them. Those two tests were only worth 10 points or so each to your overall grade, so most had just half asked it the previous two times Naruto had taken the exam, at least with the latter test. Taijutsu was a vital survival skill for a shinobi, however, so no one in their right mind had ever skimped on it, save a few who claimed they were going to be jutsu experts. Tenten had drilled him on his throwing technique though, so Naruto had no desire to draw her wrath by getting any less than full marks for the shurikenjutsu test. The couple of times that he had seen her really angry since he had befriended the aspiring weapons mistress made the young blonde very eager to avoid having that rage turned on him for any reason. Out of all of his classmates, the only person to get a perfect score of 10 out of 10 in vital locations on the target during the shurikenjutsu test was Sasuke, with Hanada and, surprisingly, Shikamaru coming in second with 9. Shino, Kiba, Ino and Sakura got a respectable 8 out of 10. Kiba and Choji scored 7 and 6 respectively. So when, with practice ease just short of Sasuke's own, Naruto also scored a perfect 10 out of 10, there was loud muttering from the class. Sasuke looked shocked for a moment before smirking and letting out an ambivalent grunt. Uruka also looked impressed. You have gained plus 200 reputation with, Uchiha Sasuke. You have gained plus 200 reputation with, Yumino Uruka. Stifling a pleased expression, Naruto moved away to let the rest of the civilian genin aspirants have a turn at throwing. He had reached, honored, status with Uruka a while back, which had led to the Chunin giving him supplementary lessons once Asuma Sensei had to stop because he went back on active duty. His Shurikenjutsu and other general ninja skills had all risen by quite a large amount thanks to that. When the Taijutsu portion came up, Naruto was really, really tempted to lay into Mizuki, who was in charge of this portion of the exam, with his advanced Hakage Taijutsu but forced himself not to act out. Long-term pranking beat short-term satisfaction, he reminded himself sternly. As much as it pained him to admit it, the blonde orphan had still never beaten Sasuke in a taijutsu match, although the number of times that they faced one another had dropped sharply, only happening once or twice a month rather than occurring nearly every other time they had spars. He supposed that Uruka sensei and his Gigi had cracked down on Mizuki enough that the blue-haired man couldn't dare interfere too much, 
At least, not beyond the increasingly frequent unsubtle looks of hatred the man sent him when Aruka wasn't looking and most of his classmates were distracted. The man was going to do something stupid, Naruto could tell. For making an accurate prediction based on prior experience and logic, you are awarded plus two, wis. An irked vein on his forehead pulsed slightly before Naruto calmed down. His power had become very snarky and sarcastic recently, sending verbal written jabs at him whenever he gained stats and generally being a bit of a pain in the ass. Mentally shrugging, the Uzumaki boy focused his attention onto the confirmation that Mizuki was indeed going to do something stupid, probably to do with him. He'd have to make preparations. Fighting Mizuki in a taijutsu spar was challenging. Thanks to altering his diet to include food other than ramen and the increased amount of exercise, Naruto was a good three inches taller than he had been when he received his gamer abilities, and he was fairly muscled as well, but Mizuki, unfortunately, had both reach and experience on him, as well as the fact that he knew the standard Hakage Taijutsu style inside and out and could thus predict with reasonable certainty exactly what Naruto was going to do even as he did it. Still, with Aruka watching, the blue-haired man had to act like a teacher and thus curtail his actions to the same level as he had with the other spars. With those limits holding him back, the man wasn't prepared for the punch to the gut that Naruto opened up with, or for the attempted knee to the face that was the follow-up. He was still a chunin though, so he was able to dodge the second attack, albeit by a thinner margin than he would have preferred. Grimacing as his attack failed, Naruto quickly retreated to await Mizuki's inevitable counterattack. It came swiftly, a low kick designed to break his stance and leave him open to punches while he was distracted. The blonde boy leapt into the air, vaulting over Mizuki's leg, which was moving at mid genin level speed, and kicked the man in the face. The look of utter shock on the Chunin's face was priceless. Naruto followed up with a chop to the side of the neck before kicking off of Mizuki and retreating again. The blue-haired Chunin was both amazed and furious that Naruto was fighting so well. He was definitely at least mid genin level, perhaps a hair stronger, which was truly amazing considering he had barely been worthy of being called a street brawler 10 months ago. The damn demon brat must be drawing on that power, the man thought bitterly. It stopped using the flawed taijutsu style I taught it and is using the advanced level of the Hakage style. No ordinary person could learn a style so quickly without the Sharingan or something similar, and it's no Uchiha. He must be using its powers somehow. Several people across the village sneezed for no reason, all of them very good taijutsu practitioners who learned quicker than Naruto. They felt annoyed for some reason too, very impressive. Even if Mizuki's lowering his abilities to mid genin at the moment, he's still got a longer reach than Naruto, and he's far more experienced. Yet Naruto's still holding him off easily. Uruka thought with a smile, very proud of the boy. I'll have to treat him to Ikiraku's after class today as a reward for his hard work. You pass, Naruto-kun. Mizuki said, hiding his reluctance behind a practiced smile. Yada Dadbeo, the orphan yelled and fist pumped gleefully. Warning. Your relationship with Toji Mizuki cannot go any lower. Naruto rolled his eyes as he walked away, closing the screen with a twitch of a finger as if he cared about what Mizuki thought of him. If the man wanted to cause trouble with him, the blonde boy would fight back. It was as simple as that. Naruto-kun, Hinata blushed and poked her fingers together. So cool, Sakura was surprised that Naruto had done so well against Mizuki-sensei. The pink it had sparred against him on a more frequent basis since her victory against Ino and never won a single time, but this was different. Even Sasuke-kun had been forced to push himself against a Chunin-level opponent, but Naruto wasn't even breathing hard. Geez, Uruka sensei was right, he is a stamina nut, the pinket thought with a shake of her head. The last Uchiha smirked at his rival's victory. That was very precise taijutsu that Naruto had just used, a very good use of the standard Hakage Keita, with a few things thrown in that were obviously Naruto's own twist on the style. No matter how good it was, it was no match for the Uchiha's secondo, intercepting fist, style. Get a new style, Dobi. I want a strong rival to try my hand against. The young Uchiha smirked as the taijutsu sparring came to an end and the class trooped back to the classroom for the last section of the genin exam, the ninjutsu portion. With the Hokage and the Janin, he's gotten better at taijutsu since I last sparred with him. Asuma mentioned to his father. 
The former member of the Twelve Guardian Shinobi had his hands in his pockets as he observed the crystal ball that the Hokage was using his Tomegan no Jutsu on. He has indeed. Sarutobi smirked at his son. Naruto-kun has come a long way in such a short period of time. Minato, Kashina, you would be so proud of him. He thought sadly. Most of the rest aren't exactly standing out, aside from the clan kids. A silver-haired man with his Hitai 8 pulled down over one eye said disinterestedly. That pink-haired girl did well on the written portion, she got full marks according to this. A black-haired woman wearing what looked like a bundle of temple sutras observed, waving a page. Haruno Sakura. Currently this year's top kunoichi. The Hokage informed her. Her intelligence is very impressive, and her skill with genjutsu is strong, but her other scores are about average. She has been training with Naruto-kun recently and has improved her physical condition. She has quite a lot of potential as either a genjutsu mistress or as a med nin. Yuhi Kurinai raised an eyebrow, slightly impressed. As the acknowledged genjutsu mistress of Konoha, she was more aware than anyone of how hard to attain such skills were. The exacting chakra control needed to craft illusions of the highest caliber was something most ninja and kunoichi were incapable of, aside from the Uchiha, who merely had to look once at any sort of technique and copy it with their Sharingan. With the only Uchiha loyal to the leaf more inclined to ninjutsu than genjutsu, she doubted her position as the preeminent genjutsu expert was in any danger. Med Nin had just as exacting chakra requirements as a genjutsu mistress did, except they were also required to have in-depth knowledge of not only the human anatomy at a level that surpassed most assassination specialists, but also a deep amount of focus, as a single fluctuation of chakra at an inopportune moment could spell disaster for their patients. So who's getting who? Asuma asked curiously. You've been playing things pretty close to your best, Oyaji. Unfortunately, the Anbu have been investigating the academy recently. Sarutobi sighed. Unbeknownst to me, standards have slipped. The academy is not as good now as it was even five years ago. Through no fault of their own, I fear this crop will need additional training before they are up to standard. The muttering of the Jonin went up a notch. Such as. Hot up K. Kakashi asked, his one visible eye sharpening as he regarded the soon-to-be Jenin. To grab a random example, out of all of them, only Uzumaki Naruto has been blooded against chakra mutations, since the academy cancelled the final year trip to a semi-saturated training ground, out of concern for their innocence, or some such drivel. The Hokage stated lowly, his tone radiating disapproval and more than a bit of frustration. Naruto-kun has been clearing training ground 13 for the past few months and is in the process of clearing the third sub-area. If what I've heard about that particular training ground is true then it's an impressive accomplishment. The silver-haired Jonin said with a nod before turning from the globe to give the Hokage a curious look. So what genius is going to be having a nice talk with Ibiki and Anko-chan about sabotaging our precious little recruits? Several members of the Merchant Council and the Headmaster of the Academy. Sarutobi said with a bite of sharp satisfaction in his voice. Another area which is in need of addressing is shinobi tactics and strategy. Just about the only ones in this class who understand what a shinobi is supposed to act like are the Nara and Abarame heirs. So, this is what I am proposing. Back with Uruka, Haruno Sakura, the scarred Chunin called out. He was looking forward to this, as Naruto had hinted over the past month that Sakura had some kind of secret weapon tucked up her non-existent sleeve for this exam. Uruka had to admit that his curiosity was somewhat piqued. Hi, Sensei, the pinket said as she came down from her seat to stand in front of him and Mizuki. Mizuki, what has happened to you? Uruka thought mournfully, casting a sad glance to where his old friend was sitting next to him. Even when they were still academy students Mizuki had always been sarcastic and had a bit of a dark streak, but since the start of the year Uruka had started to notice all sorts of incongruities about him and the way he acted, especially in regards to Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto, the one who was the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko. That was where it all came down to. Uruka had lost his parents to the beast and much to his current shame, he had indeed hated Naruto when he had entered the academy. But over the years, the ball of energy that was Naruto had worn down and dispersed that hatred. The boy wore his heart on his sleeve and Uruka was an experienced enough chunin to have a reasonably good enough ability to read people to see that the boy was about as much the Kyubi as a Satsuma was at being an apple. 
This made Mizuki's constant sabotaging of Naruto's skills worse in Aruka's eyes, as he could see in Mizuki's actions what he would have become had he not forced himself to be a consummate professional when at the academy and given the boy a chance to prove himself rather than letting his hatred blind him. Okay Sakura-chan. Please use the Kawarimi no Jutsu on that stump over there. He nodded at the wooden block of wood that Mizuki had pulled out of a cupboard when they had returned to the classroom. Nodding, Sakura ran through the five hand signs of the technique, tiger, boar, ox, dog and snake. Kawarimi no Jutsu. In a small puff of smoke in both locations, Sakura and the block of wood had exchanged places. Uruka noted that the amount of chakra smoke was very small indicating a high mastery of the technique, as well as almost no chakra wasted. Very good. Now swap positions again, please. He said with a nod. With another few moments, Sakura and the wooden block were back in their original positions. Uruka marked her down as receiving full points for that jutsu. Now, I want you to use the henge no jutsu. Transform into Mizuki. The scarred chunin directed her. For a civilian-born student, even one with such excellent chakra control as Sakura had, this was a tricky jutsu as she had to constantly emit chakra in order to maintain it, and she had smallish reserves. Sakura ran through the three hand signs, dog, boar and ram. Henge no jutsu. In another small puff of smoke, Sakura was replaced with Mizuki, who smirked and inclined his head at him in a manner very similar to the real deal. Uruka carefully examined the doppelganger of his friend before nodding. She had gotten everything right. You can release it now. He stated. With a sigh of relief, Sakura reverted to her real appearance with another small puff of smoke. Uruka once again gave her full marks for the jutsu. Excellent eye for detail and she'd managed to control her chakra expenditure beautifully. Overall, very impressive. Okay then. For the last part of this test, you are to perform a bunch in no jutsu. He stated. If you are able to perform a jutsu other than the basic bunshin in addition to it, you will receive bonus points. This was the compromise that the Hokage had made. Naruto could use a clone type other than the illusory clone, but he would not receive bonus points for it, as the test did specify a bunshin no jutsu, not the bunshin no jutsu. Anything beyond a single clone type would get bonus points though. Again, Sakura ran through the hand signs, Ram, Snake Tiger. Bunshin no jutsu. Three illusory clones of the Pinket phased into existence around her. At a cursory glance, they were perfect. Looking closer, there were a couple of very minor distortions in the clone's clothing that someone who knew Sakura would notice at once, but it wasn't a critical point. She still earned full marks for the jutsu. Very good, Sakura-chan. Now, is there another clone jutsu that you'd like to show us? Uruka asked with a knowing look. Hi, but I'll need a moment to prepare it. The Pinkett said. From her waist pouch, she pulled a couple of scrolls. Opening them, she laid one atop the other, ran through three hand signs and slammed her right palm onto the middle of the scrolls. Komoku Kuchiyo's no jutsu. Item summoning jutsu. In a small burst of smoke, a large basin full of water appeared before Uruka and Mizuki's shocked eyes. The summoning jutsu was mostly for animals, yes, but as Sakura had just demonstrated, items could be summoned as well. Using a pair of scrolls with the summoning formulae drawn onto it sharply reduced the chakra cost, as did the simplicity of the item she had bound to the scroll. Uruka could have summoned that basin and the water inside of it over a thousand times in a row and not been tired, just as an example. For Sakura, this would have wiped out about a third of her reserves. For future reference, we can prepare things like this for you. Mizuki said once he picked his jaw up off the floor. Oh, sorry. Sakura said sheepishly. Anyway, she ran through eight more hand signs. Sweden. Kika no jutsu. Water style. Vaporization jutsu. The water inside the tub rippled and then seemed to vanish. Uruka recognized the jutsu she was using. It transformed any liquid within her range into gas in the air around her. It was an E-ranked jutsu that was borrowed from Karigakur, who used it to train people in how to use both the low D-ranked jutsu Sweden. Kasumi, water style, mist, and the ordinary D rank Sweden, Karigakur no jutsu, water style, hidden in the mist jutsu. Just where had Sakura found it? Then the scarred Chunin remembered that her father, Kazashi, was a retired genin with a water affinity. He was bound to know at least a few techniques he could pass on to his child. 
Preparations, done. Sakura nodded in satisfaction. Now then, here we go. She ran through five more hand signs. Sweden. Sujoki Bunshin no Jutsu. The light condensation hanging in the air seemed to shimmer for a moment before, in a small flash, two clones of the girl stood next to her. One moved forward and poked Aruka on the arm, while the other did the same to Mizuki. A solid clone jutsu. Mizuki gaped. Barely. Aruka said, only barely keeping his professional facade up. It's a simple jutsu that's only slightly harder than the basic bunshin, but it does require a certain amount of humidity or condensation to be present in the air in order to be used, so it's best used around lakes, at sea or on the coast. Vapor clones have a very limited amount of their creator's strength and relatively low durability, but they can use Sweden Jutsu. Congratulations Sakura-chan. You've earned the bonus points. Teehee. Sakura smiled brightly and then threw a smug look at Ino, who glowered back at her in annoyance. I think that she's going to go far. The scarred Chunin thought with a smile as he handed her a hit I ate. It was one thing to know how to use a jutsu, but to prepare a method to use it even in an area like the classroom, which was usually too dry to make even one vapor clone, took both a level head and forward thinking. Both useful traits in any aspiring shinobi. With Naruto the blonde boy grinned as Sakura passed with ease. In the months since he had revealed the gamer to his Gigi, one thing he had done his best to do was level up his fuenjutsu as much as he could. Now, he could not only make type 1 storage scrolls, but type 2 storage scrolls and basic exploding tags. His Gigi had given him a scroll about summoning seals a while back and he had finally managed to make one for Sakura just a couple of days ago. She would have had to spend a bit on a large enough storage scroll, a type 4 at least, in order to carry that much water. The rest of the class were gaping at Sakura in disbelief. Most of them had heard of solid clones, especially the clan kids, but they were also usually somewhat chakra-intensive and tied to one of the elements. One of the only exceptions to the latter was the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, a pure chakra construct invented by the second Hokage. The Sujoki Bunshin was an exception to the former, only having a chakra that was a bit over double that of the basic illusion clone. Sitting back as the rest of the class went down and passed the exam was kind of boring, but Naruto knew that it couldn't be helped, alphabetically, he was one of the last people who was to be called. Unless some more people with A, B, W, X, Y or Z in their surname came into the equation, he was always going to be called somewhere around last, unless it was reverse alphabetical order, that is. Eventually, Naruto, you're next. Uruka called and Naruto sauntered down the stairs to stand easily in front of Uruka sensei and Mizuki, who was barely able to keep his distaste and hatred concealed. I think you know the drill by this point. The scarred Chunin said dryly. Third time's the charm, Uruka sensei Naruto said confidently. So, here we go. Silently, and without any hand signs, Naruto switched places with the wooden block posed for a moment and then swapped back. He had finally maxed out this jutsu over the last few months and earned a small perk for it from reaching LV100, LVMAX. The substitutor, you have mastered the Kawerimi no jutsu to its ultimate limit. You are now able to swap with something as small as a mustard seed with no hand signs and no intonation. Chakra cost for using a Kawerimi no jutsu is now set at a flat 5 CP, regardless of the small size of the target or how close it is to the jutsu's outer range. Swapping with anything larger than yourself will still cost more CP though. Mastering a jutsu like this really did pay dividends. Haruka blinked in awe. That, that was well done, Naruto. Okay then. Please transform into Hokage-sama for me. Smirking, Naruto made the ram hand sign and transformed in a small explosion of chakra smoke. Well, small by his standards, anyway. It was about triple the amount that Sakura had used for the same jutsu. When the smoke cleared, the stern personage of Serutobi Hirazan stood there eyeing both Chunin with scant favor. Uruka kun Mizuki-kun, I trust that everything is going well in these exams. The voice, both in tone and cadence, was spot on, enough to make Uruka and Mizuki instinctively straighten just as it would with the real deal. Naruto smirked as he reverted back. He had also maxed out the Henge no Jutsu, but hadn't received a perk. Instead he'd received a quest. Of the hundred transformations, you have maxed out the Henge no Jutsu. The most famous man to use this Jutsu is Kazan of Yugakur, known as Hyaku Henge no Kazan. 
match him in this regard for a reward. Quest goal. Transform into 100 different people and deceive at least one person who knows the target well. Current transformation and deception count. 21 hundredths. Quest reward. Plus 5000 EXP. Perk. Naruto of the 100 transformations, Shunshin no Jutsu, scroll. He would have done it just for the pranking value, never mind the actual rewards for the quest. That was excellent, Naruto. Haruka praised him with a smile. I literally couldn't tell the difference. Now, for the final test, please use a Bunshin no Jutsu. Nodding, the blonde Jinchuriki ran through four hand signs. Doden. Iwa Bunshin no Jutsu. From his mouth, he spat out a large glob of earth that formed into four rock clones. Does this count? Mizuki asked Aruka in shock. The guidelines specify that they have to be able to perform a Bunshin no Jutsu, not the Bunshin no Jutsu. Aruka reminded him. As a balancer though, Naruto doesn't receive any bonus points for this Jutsu. Okay, so you have now passed this section of the test Naruto. Do you want to use another clone technique for bonus points? Sure. Naruto grinned. Oi, you too. Do it. Two of the Iwa Bunshin nodded and used ran through two hand signs apiece. Doden. Iwa Hachi no Jutsu. Earth release. Rock Bowl Jutsu. Each of them spat out another lump of rock apiece, which formed largish bowls after hitting the ground. Naruto then looked at the Chunin. Could you fill these with water, Uruka sensei I need it for my Jutsu. Uruka smiled. Sure. He ran through a hand sign sequence and raised a hand at each bowl. Sweden. Suihachi no Jutsu. Water style. Water bowl Jutsu. A spout of water erupted from his hands, filling the bowls very quickly. Terminating the Jutsu, Uruka saw the awe on Naruto's face. That was cool. I thought that Jutsu was one hand only. The boy exclaimed. Enough practice with a Jutsu and you can tweak it to a degree. The scarred Chunin said modestly. And what jutsu are you planning on showing us? The boy Jin informed the tiger hand sign. Sweden. Mizu Bunshin no jutsu. Slowly surging up at the expression of his chakra, a single clone made of water grew out of each of the rock bowls and quickly stepped out, allowing Naruto to repeat the jutsu again. Why water clones? Uruka asked after a moment of surprise. I found the scroll in TG13 last month. Naruto shrugged. It still takes too long to form a clone, but I'm gonna practice until it gets up to standard. That's a good plan. The scarred Chunin nodded and undid his own Hitai 8 before handing it over to Naruto. Just like I promised, my Hitai 8. Wear it proudly as a ninja, Naruto. Naruto took it carefully and smiled wildly enough that it was a surprise the top of his head didn't suddenly fall off. It had been an old promise between the two of them that when Naruto graduated, Uruka would give him his Hitai 8. Waiting through the long, not to mention boring, after exam lecture was a pain in the ass, but Naruto bore through it. After class was dismissed for the day, with an admonishment to come back in on Monday for team assignments, Naruto ran pell-mell back to his apartment and sat down on a seat, taking off his new Hitai 8 and used, observe, on it. Kanahagakur Legacy Hitai 8 Forehead Armor A Hitai 8 handed down from Yumino Uruka to Uzumaki Naruto. It is old, but well maintained and cared for. While there are numerous designs for Hitai 8, this one is the general type designed to be tied over the forehead in mimicry of the cloth Hachimaki that bore clan symbols during the Warring Clans period. Requires class Genin and minimum level of 15 to be worn in combat. Plus 1 O armor to covered location. 5 Fuenjutsu slots, empty, this was something he had discovered once his, Fuenjutsu, skill had reached LV5. Each piece of clothing or armor had a set limit to how many seals you could place on it. Some, like typical civilian clothing, couldn't even have a single seal on it, while hardy shinobi clothing could have up to 10. A good example would be the, lesser Fujin set, of clothes. The seals already present on them to give them their useful effects took up four slots, leaving a single free slot for another piece of Fuenjutsu, although Naruto couldn't add any at the moment. This was mainly because the cloth armor seal he had required two slots to fill. Until he found a way to either increase the number of slots a piece of clothing possessed or reduce the number of slots that the cloth armor seal needed to take up, that is. His selection of supplementary Fuenjutsu, that is Fuenjutsu that wasn't a trap seal, 
an explosive tag or a storage seal, was a grand total of one right now, so that was something he was gonna have to brush up on once he was assigned to a team and had clearance to the shinobi library. Then again, I may be able to get some fuenjutsu from whoever my Jonin sensei is. Naruto hummed thoughtfully, even as his eyes strayed to the sword rack that he'd been given for free when he'd picked up his sword. It was a beautiful weapon. A kodachi, with the tell-tale ripple of a master forged blade along its edge, as well as all of the little tricks that Higurashi Tatsuhiko had forged into it. The name that the blacksmith and his wife had suggested had sounded cool so Naruto had gone along with it. Kogetsu Kyushiki, forged from the purest of chakra metal by the combined skill of the Higurashi family of weaponsmiths, the name of this blade is twofold, it can either mean, Arc Moon Type 9, or, Fox Moon Type 9, depending on how you translate it. The Type 9 part of the name is in reference to the nine special features that Higurashi Tatsuhiko designed and implemented into this weapon. If mastered, the wielder will be very close to unstoppable in close combat. LV-20 Mastercrafted, Short Weapon, Chakra Weapon, Custom Made, Evolving Durability, 300 300s Piercing Damage, SX 2 to 10 Slashing Damage, S plus 3 5 Bludgeoning Damage, S plus 5 Special Abilities, 1 Back Blade, on the reverse of the tip of the blade is a small bladed section that can be used for a reversed cut. Skill Undiscovered, 0 over 1. 2 to 4 hidden hilt weapons, by rotating the lower half of the hilt of the Kogetsu, one of three optional weapons become available to be unsealed. A short blade intended for a sneak attack, a chain and moon shaped blade to entangle the enemy or a compact launcher that can fire a small cluster of Sinban at the enemy. Skills undiscovered, 0 tenths, 15 twentieths. 5 serrated form grants the blade a serrated edge to deal more damage. Skill undiscovered, 0 25ths, 6 blunt form, remove the edge completely in order to be used in sparring. Skill undiscovered, 0 30ths. 7, Fucky, reversion, reverts the Kogetsu Kyushiki to its base form, undoing any transformation that the blade and hilt are under in the process. Skill undiscovered, 0 35ths, 8 Kogetsu Chakraha, crescent blade chakra wave, allows the user to launch a wave of pure chakra at the enemy to deal damage. 5 minute cooldown between uses. Skill undiscovered, 0 40ths. 9 Kyujin Rendon, 9 blades barrage, the blade splits into 9 tendrils that lash out and strike the nearest enemy. Damage is halved against armored locations. Skill undiscovered, 0 50ths. The sword royally kicked ass and Naruto had sworn to examine the fuenjutsu of the thing until he could replicate all of it. Just examining it casually and trying to read the seals had given him two levels in Fuenjutsu already. The evolving part confused him a bit, but it seemed that his gamer power had interfered with his sword somehow and made it so he had to kill a certain amount of enemies, be they human or chakra mutations, before he had access to the skills of his sword. Presumably, he had to kill them with the sword too. Naruto caught sight of the clock and cursed. He had to meet Uruka sensei at Ikirikus in a few minutes. Leaping up and running to his bedroom, he changed into a fresh set of clothes. Hesitating for a moment, he walked out into the living room and reverently laid his new Hidai 8 in front of his sword stand before heading out. Later Ikiraku's ramen stand. Ah. Naruto placed his third bowl of ramen down and sighed in satisfaction. Ramen was truly the food of the gods. He would accept no blasphemous substitutes. I'm very proud of you Naruto. Uruka said from next to him. You blew everyone's expectations out of the water with your exam results today, you got in the top 10. Guess I should have put more effort into my studies a lot sooner. Naruto admitted sheepishly. Then he noticed something. Hey, Tiyuchi Asen, where's Ayame Ne? I haven't seen her tonight. She's off getting some ingredients for me. The owner of the ramen stand replied. It's just a pickup from a nearby village, but I had a team of genin escort her as a high D rank mission. Some stupid bandits have been lurking around the boundaries of Kanaha's outer patrols for a while and I didn't want to risk Ayam's life. I'll have to see if we can get a clearance mission set up. Uruka sighed. I swear, sometimes the arrogant stupidity of bandits is too much for words. Some are simply stupid enough to dismiss shinobi as nothing more than common soldiers, ignoring or refusing to admit that chakra even exists while others discard it as simply parlor tricks. If ever there was a case of, too stupid to live, the man finished with a tired mutter. Too true. 
Tiyuchi snorted. Useless wastes of space. Anyway, she'll be back tomorrow or the day after. Plenty of time for you to show off your hit I ate to her. Naruto just rolled his eyes. Uruka sensei how common are bandits anyway? Both more common than I'd like and less common than you'd think. The scarred Chunin mused. Bandits come from all walks of life, deserters from the armies of the daimyo, villagers who had to turn to it to feed their families. Some of the more dangerous ones tend to be dropouts from the various shinobi academies, outcasts from the wandering clans, and even some low-ranking noop nin, those rank D and C in the bingo book. You tend to see them more during the wars or for a couple years afterwards, but they crop up even during peacetime. Most tend to find isolated areas far from ninja and prey on lone travelers and villages, but some, like the idiots around Konoha, tend to poke the bear by targeting the more well-traveled trading routes or larger settlements. We get hired by the local representative of the fire daimyo to clean them out every so often, but they tend to pop up again like cockroaches after a while. Wow. The newly minted Genin blinked. Yeah, bandit clearing missions are a pretty standard C-rank mission. Haruka said with a laugh. The daimyo's armies rarely move from the cities unless it's wartime, and we're more mobile to begin with, so we ninja get the job of cleaning up bandits more often than not. Well, that's enough on that. Looking forward to finding out who your Jonin sensei is on Monday. Yeah, I've been wanting to get into the Genin portion of the library for a while because I need to get proper Kodachi and Tonto styles to learn. The boy grinned. I meant to get you one, but I got caught up in paperwork. Haruka apologized before glancing at the clock and scowling. And I have to go and finish more paperwork right now. The end of a semester is always a pain in the butt with this kind of thing. Leaving a handful of Ryo notes on the counter to pay for his and Naruto's ramen, the Chunin ruffled a protesting Naruto's hair before leaving. Why does he always do that? Naruto grumbled good-naturedly as he tried to get his spiky mop back into some semblance of order. Tiyuchi laughed at the put-upon expression he wore. After chatting with the ramen chef for a while, Naruto headed back to his home to get started on his Fuenjutsu training. An added bonus was that he was selling his decent products to the Higurashi family for a big paycheck, or at least, for a reasonably large paycheck. When he got into his house, he at once noticed something off. There was a scroll on his living room table that definitely hadn't been there when he'd left earlier. This rang alarm bells for the Jinchuriki, so he decided to be cautious. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, he said, making the clone hand sign. A single shadow clone appeared in a pop of smoke and reluctantly headed towards the scroll and picked it up gingerly. Open it. The original ordered. Yeah, yeah, I got it boss. The clone grumbled. The Shadow Clone Jutsu had been developed for the purpose of scouting dangerous areas, deliberately tripping traps and opening strange scrolls boxes that appeared from nowhere, but that didn't mean that the clones liked it by any stretch of the imagination. Deciding to get it over with quickly, the clone opened the scroll and flinched away, expecting an explosion or something to blast it out of existence. When that didn't happen, it breathed a sigh of relief before reading the contents. Boss, Mizuki Tem is up to something. It said after a minute and showed its creator the scroll. It was a basic message informing Naruto of an exam exclusive to the top 10 ranked genin from the basic exam in order to gain the rank of, Rookie of the Year. He had to infiltrate the Hokage Tower and steal a particular scroll in order to complete half of the exam. The other half was to abscond to a clearing in training ground number 19, the forest of quiet contemplation and learn one jutsu from the scroll. It was signed, Toji Mizuki, at the bottom. The two Naruto's exchanged blank looks and said at the same time, what kind of slobbering Nimrod does he think I am? Later Hokage's office, Hokage Tower stamp. Rejected. Stamp. Approved. Stamp. 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 All rejected. What manner of idiots make requests for 24-7 guard for the civilian council? Sarutobi though irritably. He had finished discussing things with the Jonin sensei a few hours ago, and he had been battling the accursed piles of paper that threatened to bury him under ever since. The sound of feet landing lightly on the carpet in front of his desk made the aged Hokage look up in surprise. Standing in front of him wearing the full, lesser Fujin, set in his Hitai 8 was Naruto, with a serious expression on his face. Naruto-kun. How did you get past the Chunin patrollers? Not to mention the Anbu outside my office. Sarutobi frowned. A, the Chunin are easy to get past because they've kept to the same patrol pattern for the last six months. 
The boys shrugged. The Anbu weren't as easy, but they don't watch their own little roots in and out of places, so it's easy as long as you memorize those. The Hokage felt a vain pulse on his head in irritation. Someone was being lazy in the Chunin patroller division, as he had specifically ordered that the patrol patterns were to be alternated every month. He also cast a reproving glance to where he knew one of his Anbu operatives was stationed and felt the man's embarrassment at being snuck up on by an hour's fresh genin, even if it was the prankster king of Konoha. I see, I will plug those holes in the morning. Hiruzen pinched his nose at the fresh paperwork that this little excursion of Naruto's was going to generate. So, to what do I owe this late night visit? Is this your new genin outfit? Light combat version, yep. Naruto nodded before shaking his head. I have something you need to see, Hokage-sama. It's a very suspicious note that I found in my apartment, from Mizuki. This made Hiruzen narrow his eyes at his favorite orphan. Show me. After examining the note in question, the Hokage nodded. This is indeed suspicious. The scroll in question is the Forbidden Scroll of Seals, which is full of dangerous kenjutsu. Telling you to steal it is the equivalent of ordering you to commit treason. So he wanted me to do his dirty work and then run, leaving me to carry the can for him. Naruto growled. Very likely, but while I recognize this as Mizuki's handwriting, a decent forger could have written this out to frame him. Hiruzen scowled before a smirk crossed his face. Naruto-kun, how would you like to be responsible for bringing in a new nin on your first day as a ninja? The smirk on Naruto's face made Uruka, putting his feet up at his home after finishing his paperwork, shiver in trepidation such was the fell evil it contained. Tell me more, Hokage Gigi, Chapter 19, Confrontation, Naruto vs. Mizuki. Later disused clearing, forest on the outskirts of Konoha Uzumaki Naruto landed in the clearing with a large scroll slung over his back. He had even changed back to his casual getup to keep Mizuki from getting suspicious. While the scroll on his back was not the forbidden scroll of seals, it had not taken his Gigi long to whip up a very convincing fake. He'd even placed a few jutsu in it for Naruto to have a look at while he waited for the newest nuke nin of Konoha to arrive. His Gigi's plan was simply to allow Naruto to trick the man into showing his hand while he, and a few other ninja, watched via his crystal ball. That had been interesting to find out about, he'd always that the thing was little more than a pretty paperweight. Instead it was a fuenjutsu device linked to the village's defensive barriers that allowed it to be used as a focus for the Tomegan no jutsu telescope technique anywhere within Konoha. The quest that his gamer power had generated had been an even more interesting motivator. Quest alert. The hatred of a traitor. Toji Mizuki, your second teacher at the academy, has tried to trick you into betraying Konoha by stealing the forbidden scroll of seals. You took it to the Hokage who has arranged a plan to expose his treason. And you play a starring role in it, by the way. Quest objective. Deceive Toji Mizuki and make him confess his plans for the watching ninja, then survive for two minutes against him in combat until the Anbu arrive to take him into custody. Bonus objective 1. Before Toji Mizuki arrives at the clearing, learn at least one jutsu from the fake scroll of seals in your possession. Bonus objective 2. Learn all of the jutsu in the fake scroll of seals before Toji Mizuki arrives in the clearing. Bonus objective 3. Defeat Toji Mizuki before the Anbu arrive in the clearing. Secret objective. Main quest reward. Plus 1000 reputation with Kanahagakur no Sato Shinobi forces plus 500 reputation with and promotion to Genin. Plus 2000 Ryo, random A ranked jutsu scroll. Bonus reward 1. Plus 500 reputation with plus 500 reputation with, and plus 1000 Ryo, three random fuenjutsu scrolls. Bonus reward 2. Plus 1000 reputation with plus 1000 reputation with, and plus 1000 Ryo, six random fuenjutsu scrolls. Bonus reward 3. Minus 500 reputation with Namadate Tsubaki plus 500 reputation with Kanahagakur Shinobi forces plus 500 reputation with Kanahagakur Anbu bounty for capturing C rank nuke nin. Random reward, Toji Mizuki's Shinobi equipment. Secret objective reward. The quest had auto accepted, which was irksome, not to mention new. Still, he would have accepted it anyway. The chance to grind one Toji Mizuki's face into the ground for all the crap he'd put him through was too good to pass up. The rewards were just the icing on the cake. Heaving the scroll onto the ground, he 
he unfurled it and quickly skimmed through it to see just what he had to work with. The Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu, the Soshuriken no Jutsu, Manipulated Shuriken Jutsu, the Ninpo, Shuriken Ranbu, Ninja Art, Shuriken Wild Dance, Ninpo, Shuriken Goshen, Ninja Art, Shuriken Giant Body, and Ninpo, Cage Shuriken, Ninja Art, Shadow Shuriken. Naruto read out loud with a frown. Aside from the Shuriken version of his Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Shuriken Giant Body technique, which were an A and a low C ranked respectively, they were all D ranked jutsu. Then again, he didn't have that many non elemental ninjutsu, so this was a good thing. Plus, he'd possibly be able to show them to Tenten when he had the time. Naruto spotted a note on the bottom of the scroll Naruto kun, forgive me, but I must admit to being curious as to exactly how your gamer power will affect your ability to learn new technique without accessing the scroll devouring aspect of it, so I have not supplied individual scrolls for these jutsu. I will be expecting a verbal report on the matter after your mission is complete. Serutobi Hirazan. Huh, makes sense. I've told Gigi that I can learn jutsu using my gamer abilities power to devour scrolls and textbooks and via the normal way, but I don't think I've ever shown him the second one. He thought with a nod. Looking at the jutsu, he decided that the easiest jutsu to try and learn would be the shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu, as he already knew a different version of it. Unfortunately, it was not as easy as he first thought. Usually, it only took him six or so attempts to make a jutsu work, but with this one it took him just over two dozen. When he finally managed to get the skill down, he discovered why. Congratulations. You have learned the shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Active, LV1, 0 The Shuriken Shadow Clone technique was created by the Sandame Hokage, Serutobi Hirazan, and is considered one of his signature techniques, remaining a mainstay in his arsenal for the entirety of his career since he first developed it while still training under the Nadaim Hokage, Toborama Senju. Forming solid, material copies of an object using only chakra is considerably more difficult than copying the user's own body, thus this jutsu is rated a rank, rather than B rank like its parent technique, the shadow clone jutsu. At higher levels, the user can even use this jutsu on the larger Fuma shuriken, increasing its lethality. Hand signs. Ox dog dragon rat dog boar snake tiger. Requires at least one real shuriken in order to be used costs 50 cp to use once activated 11 copies of the throne shuriken will appear around it with their damage being exact copies of the base damage of the original should multiple shuriken be thrown copies of them will be made as well with copies being made of up to three additional shuriken aside from the first so making shuriken with his chakra was tougher than making clones of himself with his chakra who knew the blonde orphan immediately moved on to the simplest of the remaining four jutsu, the shadow shuriken jutsu. Unlike the other jutsu on the scroll, this technique required no chakra or hand seals to perform, simply requiring excellent timing and a bit of sleight of hand, and Naruto had always been rather good with his hands. Congratulations! You have learned the cage shuriken no jutsu. Cage shuriken no jutsu, instant, LV1, 0 hundred. The Shadow Shuriken Jutsu is a simple sleight of hand trick used to conceal one thrown shuriken in the shadow of another. More complicated than it appears at first, the user has to throw both in one motion and synchronize the rotation of both in order to keep the lower one concealed perfectly in the shadow of the higher one. While useful, it is easily seen through if the target ducks down to avoid the visible shuriken. Costs 0 CP to use. No hand signs necessary requires two identical shuriken in order to be used when used the second shuriken counts as being in stealth and any bonus skills you have that affect damage from stealth apply reduces the chance of the second shuriken being seen by the target from their perspective by 30 percent a pretty useful jutsu to boot a chakralis hand signless jutsu is a pretty useful tool to have up your sleeve lots of people underestimated the simple jutsu out there Next on the agenda was the Soshuriken no Jutsu. Being able to control Shuriken from a distance was a pretty cool trick, and fortunately, his Gigi had provided lengths of almost transparent ninja wire to use for it. It took another quarter of an hour, because it took five minutes to realize that he needed an actual target to use the Jutsu against, and another few attempting to make a target kun before he realized he could just use an Iwa Bunshin. 
He then spent another minute cursing himself out before actually learning the jutsu. Congratulations! You have learned the Soshuriken no Jutsu. Soshuriken no Jutsu, active, LV1, 0 hundred. The manipulated Shuriken Jutsu is an application of wirework, used by ninja when the use of chakra is either impossible or inadvisable for one reason or another. Attaching threads to one or more Shuriken and throwing them, the user can direct the Shuriken in mid-flight, with an expert only needing a twitch of a finger to change their course and attack the enemy. With a sufficiently imaginative mind, the tactics one can use are virtually endless. No hand signs necessary. Costs 0 CP to use. Requires at least one shuriken to have one length of ninja wire attached to it. Once in action, the user can manipulate the shuriken in any direction once in flight, within reason, but, initially at least, large and obvious hand motions are necessary to control them. With practice, that cannon will be reduced to slight finger twitches. If used to attack the enemy from an unexpected direction, the damage of the shuriken is increased by 10 and the chance for a critical hit is increased by 10%. Naruto was starting to see the trend. Even if he had bucket loads of chakra to throw around, his lesser chakra control skill was not helping much in stopping him from wasting chakra with every jutsu he used. Eventually, he'd run out. Having jutsu that didn't require chakra to use as a backup for when, if it happened would be useful. The next one he tackled was the Shuriken Ranbu Jutsu, which basically sounded like a powerful version of his cluster throat skill. And sure enough, when he acquired the skill, congratulations. You have learned Ninpo Shuriken Ranbu. Similar skill found. Cluster throw LV10 has been absorbed into Ninpo Shuriken Ranbu. Ninpo Shuriken Ranbu is now level 6. Ninpo Shuriken Ranbu Instant LV6. 48.97 Ninja Art. Shuriken Wild Dance combines slight chakra enhancement of the arms with a double handful of shuriken, resulting in a powerful technique. This technique can be combined with numerous draw techniques, infusion techniques and other aspects of the ninja arts to further increase the potential of this already useful technique. Please note that in order for this technique to be used to its best, a holster on both legs is required. 15% chance to fumble the shuriken. No hand signs necessary to use. Adds plus 1 5 to the damage of each shuriken. Costs 10 CP per shuriken. Huh, wonder why that happened. Naruto blinked before shrugging. Cluster throw had only been a skill, not a jutsu skill like shuriken ranbu was. Maybe jutsu skills were superior to ordinary skills and subsumed skills that matched them exactly or a part of them, even. It was worth thinking about. The last jutsu was Ninpo, Shuriken Goshen. That was an odd one, enlarging a shuriken to twice the size of a Fuma shuriken, or enlarging a Fuma shuriken to twice the size of a four-person dining table. Big, obvious and as subtle as how he had been months ago, stealth abilities aside. How it could be useful, he didn't know. Congratulations. You have learned Ninpo, Shuriken Goshen. Ninpo, Shuriken Goshen Instant LV1, 0 hundred Ninja Art. Shuriken Giant Body was created by Sarutobi Hirazan during his time as a member of Team Tobarama. While it may initially seem to be unsubtle, it can be more nuanced than it first appears. By expanding the target shuriken at just the right moment, the enemy who thought they had avoided a shuriken by the barest of margins ends up with a surprise injury, something that can influence the course of battle. Hand Sign. Tiger, costs 45 CP to use requires either a single standard shuriken or a single fuma shuriken in order to be used upon execution of the jutsu the target shuriken expands to a size determined by what it is a regular shuriken will grow to twice the size of a fuma shuriken while a fuma shuriken will grow to twice the size of a four-person dining table the damage of the shuriken is then changed to reflect its new size a shuriken's new damage will be that of a standard Fuma shuriken plus 20, while a Fuma shuriken's damage will be tripled. Naruto blinked. That was a pretty good jutsu. It was only useful so long as the enemy didn't expect it, or otherwise as a distraction, but inside those limits, it was very useful. He made a note to not underestimate jutsu again based on their initial description. Well, now I don't have any more jutsu to learn, I'll practice. He decided. Half an hour later office of the Hokage, Kanahagakur, troublesome, Shikaku grumbled. So why are we here, Hokage-sama? I'm certain he was about to tell you when you interrupted him, Shikaku-san. 
Hayuga Hiyashi said calmly. Agreed. Abarame Shibi stated. I was waiting for the right moment, Shikaku-san. Serutobi said gravely. As you know, Uzumaki Naruto has made off with the forbidden scroll of seals, or, so people have been led to believe. As evidence, he pulled the scroll up from where it had been resting since Naruto had left his office. Ah, can I then ask why you have half of the shinobi forces scrambling to find Uzumaki-san if he is not, in fact, a thief, the head of the Hayuga asked delicately. Because someone is playing us for fools, gentlemen. The Hokage scowled. Somehow, one Toji Mizuki managed to get a message inside of Naruto-kun's apartment, which is under strict Anbu observation and protection, without the watchers noticing. The contents of the message were designed to try to trick Naruto-kun into stealing the scroll under the guise of a secret test for the top 10 graduates. He didn't fall for it. The perennially lazy Nara clan head stated. And he brought it to you. You're planning on entrapping Mizuki using the kid as bait and us as witnesses using the Tomegan no Jutsu. Sneaky and cold there, Hokage-sama. Looking very much unaffected by the accusations leveled at him by his Jonin commander, the Sandame tapped a finger on the desk for a moment. Mizuki-kun has been under investigation for a number of months now. He has, at the very least, taught flawed taijutsu techniques to Naruto-kun, delivered doctored jutsu scrolls to Naruto-kun, attempted to casually injure Naruto-kun and supported and perhaps even helped facilitate the current nonsense at the academy. This is the last nail in his coffin. With this as evidence, he moves up from improper conduct and petty maleficence to outright treason. Naruto-kun, as the one to whom the majority of the ills have fallen upon, was, eager, to aid in Mizuki-kun's downfall. I can imagine. He or she raised an eyebrow. Though I am curious as to why this elaborate bit of subterfuge is needed. Surely there is already enough evidence to bring Toji-san up on charges. There is. Agreed Hiruzen. However, there is currently some evidence that Toji-san has been acting with the aid of outside factors. With that being the case, more drastic measures are needed. Ah. Shibi made a slight sound of realization, before nodding his head in understanding. You wish to have Toji-san's guilt be completely irrefutable so that he may be placed under Ibiki-san's, tender mercies I believe is the term. An irritating, but necessary, piece of law was that without overt and absolute proof of treason, or at least significant and convincing evidence of treason, a member of the Kanahagakur shinobi forces could not be fully interrogated as if they were an enemy shinobi. This meant no physical torture the way Mitarashi Anko liked to use, no sleep and food deprivation and so on. Psychological torture had also been limited ever since Ibiki had become the head of the T&I department. Before that, it hadn't been seen as a threat. More fool the idiots inside the village who had fallen afoul of Ibiki when he had become the head of T&I and, and began more and varied uses of particularly heavy levels of psychological torture as long as he could get away with it. Several people had been so traumatized by the man's tactics that they had to have regular counseling sessions. Those that were allowed to live after the information was extracted anyway. Psychological torture may not leave visible scars, but the wounds it left were far more grisly and harder to heal for that. Just so, Shibi-san. Serutobi nodded grimly. The ones responsible for undermining the academy directly are already under Ibiki and Anko's, tender mercies, but so far most have proven to be simple cat's paws. Toji Mizuki has, at first glance been only peripherally involved in the matter, another pawn in play, but several factors do not add up. He has been peripherally involved in all aspects of the academy's sabotage, even if in most minor of ways, while most of the others did not know of each other's involvement. That in and of itself raises suspicion. More so, since the investigation has begun, his behavior has become more erratic and his targeting of Naruto-kun more apparent. This speaks of far more than a simple grudge against the boy due to the QB. No, I believe that Mizuki-kun will have to be investigated in depth to discover exactly what he has been up to and on whose behalf. A wise decision. Shibi agreed. Why use Naruto-san though? An Anbu underneath a henge would be more than enough to fool a low-level chunin like Mizuki-san. According to reports given by Yumino Uruka-kun, a close friend of Mizuki-kun and the one who first brought his suspicious actions to my attention, he knows a wide variety of differing ninjutsu. The Sandame stated. This includes the Kugutsu no Jutsu puppetry jutsu we acquired from our treaties with Sunagakur, various Doden ninjutsu, Kenjutsu, 
Advanced Shurikenjutsu, the Muon Satsujin, silent killing technique from Kurigakur, as well as Genjutsu, Kasumi, Illusion, Haze, and a variety of other techniques which he has not been seen using on any mission in recent years. All this speaks of a man who has grown well beyond his former skills, but is attempting to keep his growth unnoticed. Hiyashi pointed out with a frown. Wasn't he initially denied the post of an academy sensei because he was suspected of killing a comrade during a mission? Shikaku frowned. The man in question received a bad injury, one that claimed his life, according to Mizuki-kun's report at the time. Sarutobi recalled with a frown. Now I am left wondering if he did in fact kill him in case the injury became a hindrance to the mission's success. If that was the case, he would have been denied a post as an academy sensei and been busted down to Genin again. Just then, the door opened, revealing Sarutobi Asuma and Hata K. Kakashi. Ah, Asuma-kun, Kakashi-kun. The Hokage nodded at them as the pair closed the door and walked over to stand next to the other three. How goes the search? As you'd expect, a lot of the ones who think Naruto's the QB reborn or something similar are up in arms, while everyone else is wondering who tricked him. The silver-haired Kakashi drawled. His lazy act was spoiled by the sharp look in his one visible eye. So how's Naruto doing himself? Asuma asked. He and Kakashi had been read into the plan from the outset, not that either was happy about it. In answer, Sarutobi brought out his crystal ball and activated the Tomegan no Jutsu, revealing a clearing in a forest, with a ramshackle shack to one side. To the other was the subject of the search by half of the shinobi forces currently stationed in Konoha. Uzumaki Naruto was working hard at practicing what all of the shinobi recognized as the Shadow Shuriken Jutsu. It was at a modestly good level as well. So he's on the run from the entire shinobi force, and he's practicing AD rank Jutsu. Shikaku deadpanned. Not sure if I'm insulted or amused by this. It's something I gave him to pass the time. Sarutobi said with a nod. Mizuki-kun isn't due to rendezvous with him for another, five minutes or so. So he's had around about two hours to learn and practice the five jutsu that I gave him in the fake scroll of seals. And, judging from how smoothly he's using the shadow shuriken jutsu, he's doing fairly well. Well it is a chakralis D-ranked jutsu. He or she pointed out passively. One he hasn't seen before today, if I'm guessing right. Asuma pointed out mildly. After only two hours of practice, to have a good understanding of the jutsu is something beyond most ninja. I know that jutsu and it took me at least a week to get to the point the kid seems to be at right now. Troublesome. Shikaku grumbled as he mentally admitted that the former Guardian Ninja 12 member was perfectly correct. No matter if the jutsu was simple or not, or even used chakra or not, getting a firm grasp of how a jutsu worked, as well as any motions, movements and nuances in its usage, was not a quick process. This went especially for any jutsu that used weapons as a medium or a conduit. As a jutsu, most would consider the cage shuriken no jutsu to be barely worthy of the distinction, as it was, at its base, simple sleight of hand and misdirection. That's what a civilian would see, at any rate. It was low level, used no chakra and was seen through fairly easily. But it was that simplicity, lack of chakra and sleight of hand that made it a very useful technique to have at hand. When most went for flashy balls of fire and blasts of electricity, something as simple and as subtle as a second shuriken hidden beneath the first was the last thing most people expected. Many who relied on an ability to perceive or sense chakra to sense incoming attacks would be caught completely off guard simply because it required no chakra to use. For a shinobi, particularly one known to be as brash and flashy as Naruto Uzumaki was, it was the last thing most would expect to see him use. Which was probably why the Hokage had chosen it for the boy. Ah, and it's about to begin. Sarutobi said with a steely-eyed expression as Toji Mizuki appeared at the edge of the clearing. Let us see exactly what Mizuki-kun has to say for himself, then. Executing more hand signs, he enabled the fuenjutsu arrays that permitted the crystal ball to allow sound to pass through the technique as well as sight. It made maintaining the Tomegan no jutsu a bit more chakra intensive, but even as old as he was, Sarutobi could maintain it for several hours. The five men before him gazed into the orb as the traitor approached Naruto. With Naruto congratulations. The skill cage shuriken no jutsu has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Nodding to himself in satisfaction, Naruto walked forward and grabbed the shuriken and gave them a quick once-over to check for damage. 
While their durability had dropped a couple of points, they were still good to use. Satisfied, he slipped them back into place in his holster. He'd leveled his five new jutsu by one apiece, which was pretty good going. He was going to have to get some Fuma Shuriken at some point, to make full use of both the Cage Shuriken no Jutsu, and Ninpo, Shuriken Goshen. Bloodlust detected. Several meters behind you. Naruto stiffened slightly as he heard the soft footfalls of someone else in the clearing and, judging by the all too familiar feeling of ki emanating from the person in question, it was Mizuki. Smiling quickly before putting on his best, happy go nuts mask, Naruto turned around and beamed at the silver haired Chunin. Toji Mizuki LB28 Trader, Nuk Nin of Kanahagakur, Hey Mizuki Sensei, he greeted the trader. You got here pretty quick, I only had time to get one jutsu down. I doubt that the cage shuriken no jutsu was in the scroll. The man offered back dryly. He was dressed in his usual chunin outfit, with the addition of a pair of large shuriken slung over his back. No, that's something I picked up a while back. Naruto waved the idea away easily and threw four shuriken at the Iwa Bunshin that had henged into a target kun. Watch this Dadbeo. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. To Mizuki's disbelief, he watched as the four shuriken multiplied into 48, slamming into the target kun across multiple vital areas. There wasn't a ninja worth their salt who hadn't heard of the shuriken version of the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Created by the Sandame Hokage, it was a rank above the parent jutsu and was an exceptionally deadly jutsu when used correctly. There should be no way for a normal boy to learn an A-ranked jutsu in just two hours. The Chunin thought in shock. The demon must be exerting more of its powers. In his mind, he shuddered as he remembered staring up at the enormous mountain-sized nine-tailed fox as it laid waste to Konoha. Even if he hated Konoha, even if he despised it for keeping him from his rightful position, he would not let the demon grow in strength any more than it already had and possibly destroy Konoha all over again. He may have come to hate the village for its crimes against him, but the horror of the Kyuubi unleashed was not something he would wish upon his worst enemy. Mizuki Sensei. Naruto said with a cocked head. You okay? You were pulling a funny face there. Eh? Hey. Oh oh, yes, just a bit of trapped wind. He lied. What are those things on your back? The blonde asked curiously after pausing for a moment. Hmm. Oh, these are Dai Shuriken. Mizuki patted the closest point poking over his shoulder. Essentially just large versions of a standard shuriken. They're not as impressive looking as a Fuma shuriken, but they're far more durable. I've had these two beauties for over five years and they've never let me down once. That's pretty cool. They expensive. Naruto eyed them thoughtfully. They can be, 10,000 Ryo each for an ordinary pair and about 50,000 for a good set like mine. Mizuki explained. For 70,000, you can get some with Fuenjutsu enhancements on them, although I prefer them without the extra bells and whistles. An idea occurred to Mizuki, making him suppress an evil grin. The demon had brought the scroll like the idiot that it was and the massive purple scroll was currently leaning against a tree several feet away from the beast, all wrapped up. With a bit of trickery, he could end the demon with one strike. The big advantage to getting a superior Dai Shuriken over a regular one, Naruto-kun, he said as he unlimbered one of his Dai Shuriken, is that about 10 years ago, they discovered a method of permanently infusing an elemental affinity into chakra metal, albeit at a weak level. With water chakra metal covering the inside of the hole in the center of the Dai Shuriken, with a bit of chakra manipulation, you can do this. Doing so as he gripped the rim of the Dai Shuriken, the large thrown weapon started to spin rapidly until it was a blur, gathering dust to it as it spun. Whoa. That's awesome. Naruto exclaimed. Yes. Not only can you use it for close combat attacks, you can use it to add more power to your throw. Mizuki shouted as he flung the Dai Shuriken right at Naruto, who was only standing a couple of meters away. Once I tell them that I killed the demon because he tried to steal the scroll of seals, I'll be a hero. Mizuki exulted to himself. And I'll get the scroll to myself. Then an explosion of smoke surrounded Naruto just before the Dai Shuriken hit him. When the smoke cleared, the boy had been replaced by the target Kun, which had reverted it its form as an Iwa Bunshin and had been cut in half. What the? Mizuki exclaimed in shock. Missed me, Mizuki Sensei. Naruto said from half the clearing away, smirking at the silver-haired Chunin. Your aim needs some work, Sensei. You couldn't hit me with a flower pot, never mind a big-ass shuriken. 
You, the traitor growled angrily. You foul little demon. You've known about my plan from the start, haven't you? Considering you snuck a message into a building watched by a squad of Anbu, yeah, I have. Naruto admitted with an easy shrug. Only reason to go through all the trouble for something like this is if you were trying to pull a fast one on me. Tisk. So what if you figured that out? Mizuki sneered. Once I kill you, I'll take the scroll and use it to gain power. So that's all this was. An excuse to kill me legitimately and take the forbidden scroll of seals, the blonde boy asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes. Mizuki snarled. Let me tell you something good, Naruto. The reason everyone around you looks down on you. The reason that everyone hates you. It's because you are the QB. Twelve years ago, the Yandaimi died in order to kill you and you were reincarnated as baby. You are a mistake that I'm going to remedy right here, right now. You really are a moron, you know that. Naruto snorted in contempt, looking utterly unaffected by Mizuki's words. Well that certainly wasn't the reaction the traitorous Chunin had expected. Mizuki's jaw dropped and he managed to get a, huh, out. I am not the QB reborn, you half-baked excuse of a ninja, the boy stated firmly. I am Uzumaki Naruto, genin of Kanahagakur no Sato and the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune. In other words, the Yandaimi sacrificed himself to seal it within me. If I die, then the Kyubi will be released, you idiot. Mizuki paled for a moment before shaking it off. No, he couldn't let its words get to him. You couldn't trust the words of a Kitsune. He wouldn't be deceived. So what? I'll be long gone by the time the beast gets its bearings, assuming you're even speaking the truth, brat. He sneered as he grabbed his other die shuriken and started it spinning. I'll be the one to have the power of the scroll and you'll be dead. With another heave, he sent the spinning weapon hurtling at Naruto, who quickly ran through the six hand signs for his best defensive jutsu. Futon. Fujinheki, he shouted and a wall of wind roared into existence in front of him. The Dai Shuriken slammed into it and struggled for a moment before being sent flying off to slam into a tree. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief, all that work to get it to LB5 had been worth it, as that attack had dealt out 200 points of damage at least. The natural advantage that Futon Jutsu had against thrown weapons had reduced that damage down to 150, and his Fujinheki had 160 durability points. Just barely safe. Naruto wasn't sitting on his ass though. He wanted to defeat Mizuki and he could see the clock counting down from two minutes already, so he ran through the six hand signs of his next jutsu. Kaiten. Hotarubi, he called out and breathed out a swarm of small fireballs. They passed straight through the Fujinheki, growing in size as their power was boosted by the futon jutsu and flew out to attack Naruto's target, Mizuki. Doden. Doryuheki. Earth style. Earth style wall. Mizuki yelped as he made the tiger hand sign and slammed his hands on the ground, making a very crude wall emerge from the ground. The crude design and shaky construction a result of only using a single hand sign to activate the jutsu, it could be presumed. The small fireballs, each the size of a large grapefruit thanks to the Fujinheki they had passed through, and numbering at least 150, started striking the badly made Doryuheki, each gouging out a part of the loosely packed earth that made it up. Doden. Dochu Aigyo, Earth Style, Underground Projection Fish. Mizuki whispered as he sunk into the ground, abandoning his position to attempt to sneak up on the demon. He'd used Doden, Shinju Zanshu, Earth Style, Double Suicide Decapitation, to drag the brat into the ground up to his neck and then cut his head off. Naruto frowned as no counterattacks were forthcoming from Mizuki, which wasn't like him, the man should be counterattacking at this point. Then a nugget of information that his Gigi told him made him make the snake and dog hand signs. Doden. Mogura Kanshi. Earth style. Sensing like a mole. He whispered. It had only been two weeks ago that he had, once more, defeated Mogura Wagura, the massive mole, and earned this jutsu. It was, put simply, Mogura Wagura's ability to sense movement on and in the earth, very useful to use against people who snuck up on others underground, such as one Toji Mizuki was doing. Let's see you dodge this underground. Doden. Dongan, Naruto shouted and stamped his foot. Underground, beneath an oblivious Mizuki, a manhir formed and shot up through the earth straight at the man. At the last minute, Mizuki noticed it and tried to dodge, but it was too little too late. The massive stone slammed straight into his solar plexus and started pushing him up as well. 
Seconds later, both Menhir and Man emerged from the earth, flying up into the air before separating and crashing to the ground in separate places. Toji Mizuki has had the stunned status effect afflicted upon him for 30 seconds. Okay then, eat this. Naruto grinned and clenched one fist, a dragon's head forming around it. It had taken until level 15 before the jutsu he was about to use had dropped to a sufficiently low time to charge, but it was gonna be so worth it. Futon. Ryaha. Punching forwards as he shouted, Naruto unleashed the jutsu, a massively long serpentine dragon made of wind launching itself from his clenched fist. Coiling and soaring through the air, it made a beeline towards Mizuki, who had just recovered from having the wind driven out of him by a lump of stone heavier than he was. Oh crap! He paled and sunk into the ground, but his arm got clipped by the dragon, shredding his dark blue shirt sleeve and creating dozens of small cuts across his skin. Underground, the new nuke Nin cursed and started wrapping a bandage around the wounds on his arm that he had taken from his pouch. Damn it, how the hell is the demon this strong? He thought furiously and with not a touch of fear. It's obviously been concealing what it knows. I have to end it, quickly. Naruto was also concerned, he only had about another 30 seconds to beat Mizuki before the Anbu turned up. Fortunately, the Chunin emerged near one of his Dai Shuriken. Reclaiming his weapon in an instant, the traitorous Chunin started running towards him with it spinning furiously. Die, Kyubi, he bellowed, drawing his weapon back. Naruto smirked and drew his Tonto, Mizuki hadn't taken any notice of them or if he had, he dismissed their threat as minimal. His big mistake. Futon Chakra Nagashi, he muttered, sending Futon Chakra into Tsubaki and Sumire. Naruto then executed the Hasamigiri against the incoming Dai Shuriken cutting it in half, just barely missing the skin of Mizuki's knuckles. Mizuki leapt back, panic on his face as Naruto continued the attack. Doden Chakra Nagashi, Naruto growled before speeding up and slamming his now very dense Tonto into his former sensei's body, breaking several bones. Gah, the Chunin roared in pain. I'm going to kill you and everyone you care for, demon. That made something snap inside of the blonde Uzumaki, unleashing a feral rage that flooded his mind and body. No you won't. Naruto roared back and, as if bitten by some unseen force, dropped his weapons to make the clone hand sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. In an explosion of smoke, an entire army of Naruto clones stood surrounding Mizuki, who gaped at them in shock for just an instant before they dogpiled the traitor, fists and feet slamming into every part of his body. Naruto looked bewildered, that was way more clones than he had ever summoned before. After about 10 seconds, all of his clones dispelled themselves and Naruto was presented with the sight of one badly beaten, and unconscious, Toji Mizuki. And there were still 3 seconds on the clock. He waved away the notifications until he had some alone time later. Huh, yada, he cheered. Take that, bastard traitor. No sooner was the last syllable out of his mouth than the clearing was full of Anbu. Two binding Mizuki's arms, one retrieving the fake scroll and one, the purple-haired cat-masked Anbu he was familiar with, approached him. Genin Uzumaki, congratulations. She said with a nod at him. Not many fresh Genin could take down a Chunin. You are unharmed. A bit drained chakra-wise, but I'm unhurt. Naruto said after checking himself over. The traitor's not though, I got him good in the chest with a Dongan. His arms cut to hell from Arayaha and I definitely broke some bones with the last clash we had before you all arrived, Neiko-san. So noted, Genin Uzumaki. Neiko nodded again. Hokage-sama gave orders to take you to see him after this incident was resolved, which it has now been. Saru-san and Tori-san will take the traitor to T&I for processing, while Ryu-san will accompany us to Hokage-sama. Sighed along Shunshin again, Naruto asked with a sigh. Sadly, yes, Uzumaki-san. Neiko replied with an amused tone to her voice as she placed one hand on his shoulder. In three, two, one, now. In a swirl of leaves, she, Naruto and the dragon-masked Anbu vanished from the clearing. With the Hokage, so then, opinions, gentlemen. Sarutobi asked as he deactivated the Tomegan no Jutsu and sat back on his chair. Genin Uzumaki is rather skilled with ninjutsu and the Hakage Taijutsu style, although his Kenjutsu with his Tanto leaves something to be desired. He or she offered simply. He has been unable to access the library to acquire a proper style due to his civilian status. 
Yumino Uruka has been kept busy with reorganizing the academy and Asuma has been busy getting back into the swing of missions. The Hokage said with a frown. Additionally, the staff members of the library were denying him entry even into the civilian section. I have since fired and replaced them with good, even-minded people, so that should not be an issue from here on out. The traitor severely underestimated the kid. Shikaku said bluntly. He was also slightly more skilled than we gave him credit for, but I do wonder about why he didn't try to use Genjutsu on the kid. Says in his academy files that the Uzumaki has almost no ability to detect or dispel Genjutsu. Mizuki was of the foolish opinion that Genin Uzumaki was the Kyubi reborn, Shikaku-san. Shibi pointed out softly. Do recall that only one individual has ever been known to be able to use Genjutsu on a biju. Mizuki may have been arrogant and foolish, but even he dared not compare himself to Uchiha Madara. Troublesome. Yeah, I can see that. The Jonin commander nodded. It was a pretty good combo that the kid came up with, using the Fujinheki to power up his Hotarubi. Asuma opined. He also seems to have some kind of sensory jutsu for detecting people underground. Pretty useful thing to have. That was Doden, Mogura Kanshi. Kakashi put in. It's not a rare jutsu, but it's more commonly practiced in Iowa than here. Where'd he find it? Training Ground 13. The Hokage said. It's apparently not been swept through for quite some time, so has accumulated scrolls regarding various techniques. Naruto-kun is in charge of clearing it out, an ongoing D-ranked mission. Huh. The silver-haired Jonin nodded. His tactics need some work, but it looks like we've got a diamond in the rough here, Hokage-sama. The sheer number of clones he created at the end there, agreed. Shibi nodded. He has also mastered the Kawerimi no Jutsu to the point of not needing hand signs or verbal intonation. Not something that you would expect from a genin, or even most fresh chunin. One does not usually reach such a level with it until they are approaching Tokubetsu or even full Jonin level. Thank you. As to Toji Mizuki, he is to be interrogated by Ibiki personally. Every scrap of information he has will be extracted and he will be sent to the Konoha Strict Correctional Facility once that is completed. The duration of his sentence will be determined depending on what information Ibiki extracts from him. Serutobi states firmly, his eyes determined. Neiko-san and Naruto-kun ought to be here shortly, so you five are dismissed. Kindly write up everything you saw and heard on the crystal ball and hand it in before Monday. Asuma, come by tomorrow. I have something I need to inform you about, SS rank. His son's eyebrows shot up in shock, but he pulled himself together and nodded at his father. Hi, Hokage-sama. Not long after the five men left, Neiko led Ryu and Naruto in. Studying the boy in person made the Hokage feel a bit more at ease. No wounds and only a minor case of chakra depletion that was already rapidly recovering. Serutobi often found himself somewhat envious of how rapidly the boy's chakra regenerated, it would serve him well as a shinobi. Neiko-san, Ryu-san, Naruto-kun. He greeted them all. Neiko-san, report. Hokage-sama. Neiko nodded. The traitor Toji Mizuki was defeated by Genin Uzumaki seconds before my squad arrived on the scene. Saru and Tori are securing him and taking him to the T&I department. Ryu has the scroll of seals and Genin Uzumaki is completely unharmed. Excellent work. Serutobi nodded. Kindly go and call off the search for Naruto-kun and give the prepared story to them. Hi, Hokage-sama. Neiko nodded again. After Ryu handed over the fake scroll, the two Anbu vanished in puffs of smoke. So Naruto-kun, how was it, fighting Mizuki, the Hokage asked his surrogate grandson. After all the crap that guy's given me over the last year, it was very, what's the word? Naruto blinked as he tried to think of the right word. Starts with A, C, means satisfying. Cathartic, the Sandame suggested with a knowing smirk. Yeah, that's it. The new genin nodded enthusiastically. Man, he was a tricky one, much harder than fighting the chakra mutations because he could actually use jutsu. If I hadn't gotten my hands on the Mogura Kanshi no jutsu, he might have gotten me though. Yes. Doten is a very underappreciated element, but as Mizuki demonstrated, it can be used in a variety of ways. The Hokage nodded. Now, as you successfully captured Mizuki, you have earned his bounty, that would be a C-rank nuke nin's bounty, as well as all of his ninja tools and jutsu scrolls. I am afraid that his fiancée will be upset with you though. 
Tsubaki-san, right? Naruto asked with a sigh. Yeah, my power already told me I'd take a hit with her, reputation-wise. Can't be helped though. The guy was nuts, thinking I was the QB reborn and all that. Hatred can destroy people, as I told you a few months ago, Naruto-kun. Sarutobi sighed sadly. Mizuki-kun was, in all probability, once a loyal member of Konoha, but after witnessing the QB attack and a certain incident twisting his values, he became the man who attacked you today. A sad happenstance, for the Chunin forces are the mainstay of the military power of a hidden village. Losing one to his own hatred and greed is not something that is a cause for celebration, but it had to be done. Naruto nodded solemnly. He personally felt that getting shot of Mizuki was for the better, but his Gigi had to think about the military situation in Konoha as a whole, so the boy said nothing. Anyway, congratulations on graduating, Naruto-kun. The Hokage said warmly. Given your performance today, I believe you will do well in our forces. Have this as a graduation present from me. Reaching under the desk, Sarutobi pulled out a green haori with the kanji for wind emblazoned on the back. That's part of the greater Fujin set. Naruto exclaimed in shock. Yes. I had a look through the Sarutobi clan's storehouse and found that one of our members 10 years ago was a futon primary and doden secondary much as you are. He wore this until he became a chunin and gained access to better equipment. The Sandame said. I reimbursed the clan for its value and had it checked over and repaired to its original glory before giving it to you. I think it'll suit you quite well. Thanks, Gigi, the orphan exclaimed and used, observe, on it. Greater Fujin Haori, emblazoned with the kanji for wind in the center of its back, this Haori is perfect for one who aspires to use futon ninjutsu, as it is said that the one who wears it will find their futon ninjutsu to be greatly empowered. Part of the Greater Fujin set. Level 17 requires level 5 futon affinity. Def plus 50 effect 1. Futon assault empowerment. Increase the damage dealt by all offensive futon ninjutsu by 5%. Effect 2. Futon defensive empowerment. Increase the durability of all futon defensive ninjutsu and constructs by 5%. Effect 3. Futon blade enhancement. Increase the attack power and durability of all futon ninjutsu that involve blades by a further 5% in addition to any other power-ups. Naruto grinned. He was just a short time away from gaining the fifth level of his natural primary futon affinity, so this was perfect. Also, take this. Sarutobi gave Naruto a square token with a C carved onto it. This bounty authorization token allows you to claim a bounty from the main desk. Nako san should have posted Mizuki's bounty down there as she passed, so you can claim the reward. If you have any problems, tell me and I'll have Nako san politely explain the situation. The grimly amused expression on the Hokage's face told Naruto that Nako san would be using her sword to do her talking if anyone was stupid enough to ignore an official token from the Hokage's own hand. Got it, Gigi. Naruto nodded. Before you go, I have something to tell you, Naruto kun. Sarutobi said seriously. As you know, you'll be put onto a team on Monday. Unfortunately, the last five years of your lessons at the academy have been, sabotaged. Not just you, but your entire class. Baruka kun is going through the old syllabus and comparing it with the one you were taught under to see exactly what parts have been altered and curtailed. Why would they weaken our training? The Uzumaki boy didn't know whether to be angry or baffled. Civilians. The Sandame shook his head in irritation. A lot of them are indignant about the status that shinobi get in Konoha, so they wanted to have more of their children in positions of prestige and power to possibly enact changes at a later date. They didn't like their children's chances with the old curriculum, so they bribed key personnel at the academy, including the headmaster, to weaken it, letting more civilians graduate. It didn't stop the Jonin from weeding out the unworthy with their tests, but to be fair to the better among the civilian born, nine-tenths of them passed the test the following year. Indignant, about ninja having power and influence, in an actual ninja village. Naruto stated slowly, as if to enunciate the words aloud would have them make more sense to him. They didn't. You should have the medics crack them open for research on how stupid people can get without having a brain, Gigi. Sarutobi stifled a chuckle. As fun as that sounds, Naruto-kun, that's only permitted in times of war and only on spies, traitors and particularly infamous enemy shinobi. Anyway, the point is that even as officially graduated genin, 
your class will have many holes in your education. You, just for an example, are the only one who has been blooded against chakra mutations, whereas the class should have been taken to a chakra-saturated training ground to get their first kills three months ago. You also lack sufficient training in regards to resisting and breaking genjutsu. Had Mizuki thought with his head rather than with his prejudices, he may have gained the upper hand against you. Naruto winced. Yeah, my chakra control just isn't good enough. It's called lesser chakra control for a start and it's barely at level 20. Using any kind of weak genjutsu needs me to get an increasingly high amount of chakra control, the more chakra I get, the higher the requirement is. I might as well try juggling horses with one hand tied behind my back for all the good my chakra control does me. What about detecting and dispelling genjutsu, the Hokage asked curiously. I have to max out lesser chakra control in order to be able to detect and dispel genjutsu. Naruto almost growled in frustration. I won't be using any kind of genjutsu in my life, barring some kind of super awesome power up. So long as you can defend yourself against it, that is enough. Sarutobi nodded. Will it become a skill that you can level up, do you think? I think it will. Naruto said uncertainly. Most techniques that can be advanced like normal can be turned into skills, even something as mundane as dish washing. There is still much that I fail to understand about your power Naruto-kun, and the part where you develop seemingly inane and useless skills like that is one of them. Sarutobi said with a shake of his head after a moment to mentally boggle at that example. Join the club. The boy grumbled. Still, it is encouraging that you will be able to advance your skills in countering genjutsu, even if casting them is beyond you. The Hokage nodded to himself. Anyway, in order to counter the holes in your educations, all teams will, after being formally accepted by their Jonin sensei, be regularly given inter-team training. A veteran team has volunteered to help train you all as well, the former Team 9, Team Guy, which has young Tenten on it. I get to train with Ten Chan on a regular basis. Thanks, Gigi. Naruto yelled excitedly. Noting the affectionate honorific directed at the tomboy weapons mistress for later blackmail and or teasing, Sarutobi smiled at his surrogate grandson's excitement. It won't be with just Tenten Chan. He gently reminded Naruto. You'll have to spar against the others as well. I will. The Uzumaki boy nodded obediently. Very good. Please keep this to yourself until the time of the first inter-team training session. Sarutobi requested. Now, off home with you. You deserve a good night's sleep after bringing in a traitor on your very first day as a genin, he finished with a laugh. Gotcha, Gigi. You get some sleep too, you need it. Naruto shot back at him as he left, leaving Sarutobi to roll his eyes. He hadn't gone to bed before midnight since halfway through his first reign as Hokage. Hokage-sama. An Anbu appeared in a puff of smoke not 10 minutes later. Some members of the search party are asking to speak with you regarding Naruto-san. Kindly tell them that Naruto-kun said to say that they have been pranked. Sarutobi smirked. And that he was standing in roughly the same spot for almost two hours, so he was most disappointed that no one was able to find him. That is an evil thing to do to Naruto-san. The Anbu observed. He likely would have said something like that had he thought of it as a prank rather than a mission. The Hokage pointed out fairly. As it is, we need an excuse to tell everyone regarding the incident that does not involve Mizuki's treachery, there has already been too big of a shakeup at the academy without throwing further accusations of treachery and treason at them. The last, wide-scale prank by Naruto-kun would fit this situation, and it is a further explanation beyond what Neiko-san told them earlier. Neiko had told them that it was a classified incident, but Naruto had not been treacherous or treasonous. This would simply make them indignant against his pranks. And sure enough, a few minutes after the Anbu left. That blonde bastard. Music to my ears. The old man smirked as he started on the next mound of paperwork that this day had piled up on his desk. I wonder how it will be for Naruto-kun to be on the receiving end of a prank for a change. With Naruto living room, Naruto's apartment, a mechage apartments all of a sudden, Naruto was struck by a shiver going down his spine. He felt as if someone was plotting against him in a non-malicious fashion that was still going to be a pain to deal with. Shaking that feeling for the moment, Naruto turned his attention to the multifarious messages floating around him. With a small mental command, he organized them into order and then started reading them. It was one of the tricks he had learned that wasn't a skill. 
You have delivered a series of critical blows to Toji Mizuki. He has had the broken bones, ribs, hip debuff inflicted upon him. Congratulations. You have defeated Toji Mizuki. Experience cannot be gained as you have maxed out your class level cap. As this is quite the hefty chunk of EXP, it will be deferred until after you class up. Quest complete. The hatred of a traitor. You successfully tricked Toji Mizuki into revealing his plans to the watching Hokage. Quest reward. Plus 1000 reputation with Kanahagakur no Sato Shinobi forces plus 500 reputation with, and, promotion to Genin, plus 2000 Ryo, Sweden, Debukufu no Jutsu, scroll. Bonus objective 1. You successfully learned one Jutsu from the fake scroll of seals before Toji Mizuki showed up. Bonus objective 1 reward. Plus 500 reputation with, plus 500 reputation with, and, plus 1000 Ryo, Fuenjutsu. Funyu no Jutsu, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Shikoku Fuen, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Ofuda Kekai. Bonus Objective 2. Much to unanimous amazement, you were able to learn all five of the Jutsu in the fake scroll of seals without using the scroll absorption system. Kudos to you. Bonus Objective 2 Reward. Plus 1000 Reputation with, plus 1000 Reputation with, and, plus 1000 Ryo, Fuenjutsu. Kai, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Sanpo Fuen, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Zentai Kenza, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Fukahoin, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Keiyaku Fuen, scroll, Fuenjutsu, Nunoshibari no Jutsu. Bonus Objective 3. You successfully went above and beyond what was expected of you by the Hokage and Anbu and successfully defeated the new Nin Toji Mizuki in one-on-one -on -one combat, with seconds to spare on the clock. Bonus Objective 3 Reward. Minus 500 reputation with Namadate Tsubaki, plus 500 reputation with Kanahagakur Shinobi Forces, plus 500 reputation with Kanahagakur Anbu, Bounty for Capturing C Rank Nuk Nin, 200,000 Ryo, Greater Fujin Haori, Toji Mizuki's Shinobi Equipment. Quest completed. Growing a cherry blossom. With hard work and grit, the formerly borderline wimpy Sakura is just barely hitting the average for fitness amongst active duty genin. Good work. Quest reward. Plus 750 EXP deferred until after class up plus 600 relationship with Haruno Sakura, Fuma Shuriken foldable type. Congratulations. You have successfully earned your position as a Genin ranked shinobi of Kanahagakur. The title, Genin, has been added to your list of titles. The title, Bounty Hunter, has been added to your list of titles as a result of bringing in a new Nin. You have now classed up. Level restriction has been upgraded to 40. You have acquired the accumulated experience from the defeat of Toji Mizuki and completing the, the Hatred of a Traitor, and, Growing a Cherry Blossom quests. You gained 17,750 EXP. Phew. That's a lot of stuff to go through. Naruto shook his head. All of it was good news though, getting on the good sides of the regular shinobi forces and Anbu couldn't be anything else. There was the downside that Mizuki's fiancé was going to be pissed at him, but there was nothing he could do about that. All of the Fuenjutsu scrolls would be useful, as his repertoire was very limited in that regard, although he wasn't sure if his Fuenjutsu and calligraphy levels were high enough to learn them. Getting all of Mizuki's equipment would be useful, for all that the man was a louse and a traitor, he had good taste in equipment. The Dai Shuriken was a good addition, as was the katana that he had possessed, but not used against Naruto for whatever reason. The miscellaneous kanai and shuriken would mean he wouldn't have to buy any for at least a month or two and he now had a spare hit I ate. The quest regarding Sakura-chan had been something of a relief, he had wondered why he hadn't gotten a notice about failure or success during the whole big lecture, but evidently his power considered that the moment he became a genin was the deadline. The rewards were rather nice, especially that Fuma Shuriken. Saved him a bit of Ryo in that regard. Name. Uzumaki Naruto class. The gamer level. 17. Next level. 59.93% title. Genin plus 15% EXP to LB25 age. 12 HP. 2000 2000 CP. 2200 2200 STR. 43 STA. 46 plus 10 dex. 40 int, 41 plus 5, wis, 37 luck. Looking at his newly updated status page, Naruto felt a swell of pride. Finally. Finally, after three failed attempts at graduating, he was a ninja at last.
The screen in front of him wavered just then and Naruto blinked. That had never happened before. Before he could do anything else, the status screen snapped out of existence and another one popped up in its place. Congratulations. You have completed the prologue. What? As the prologue is now completed, the gamer will now expand to encompass the elemental nations, rather than just Kanahagakur and its environs. What? Due to the technical, metaphysical and spiritual aspects involved, the gamer will be going into version up mode. The interface, stat calculation and jutsu damage calculation aspects, among others, will be updated and improved upon. Unfortunately, this means that you will be unable to access the majority of functions for the gamer during the update duration. What? The estimated time to complete this upgrade is 48.00 hours. Please accept the sincere apologies of the management if this inconveniences you in any way. You will be compensated with a free gift of your choice from a selection of three upon completion of this upgrade by way of a proper apology. Have a nice day. This bullshit again. Naruto exploded in a mixture of exasperation, anger and disbelief at being jerked around by his power for what had to be the umpteenth time swearing under his breath, Naruto took stock of what he could and couldn't do. He could use jutsu, skills and access the inventory. Everything else was utterly useless. Great. The newly promoted Genin groaned. Well, no point crying over spilt milk, as he turned to head to the kitchen, he froze. Standing at the door to the living room was Aruka sensei and he had a scary smile on his face. Sonaruto, he said as he cracked his knuckles. What's this I hear about you playing a prank on the entire shinobi force? The blonde boy had one thought at this situation. This is gonna suck. Chapter 20. The teams assemble. The next day living room, Naruto's apartment Yumino Aruka was feeling very much like a right heel at the moment. After he had kicked Naruto's ass for pranking the entire shinobi force, at the time, he'd also felt a small flicker of pride at the boy being able to cause mass chaos so easily without getting caught, that kind of ability would serve him well in the future he had been summoned to the Hokage's office. There, he had been told the truth, how Mizuki, his friend, had tried to trick Naruto into committing treason. How the blonde boy had, in return, easily caught onto the deception given Mizuki's past animosity and had brought it to the Hokage. And how the crafty old bastard had arranged things so that Mizuki had been given just enough rope to hang himself before seeing him carted off to Anko and Ibiki. More than that, Naruto had fought and defeated Mizuki when the Chunin had tried to kill him. Pride, anger and shame had warred within Aruka. Pride at Naruto, for being cautious, for using his head rather than rushing in like he would have as little as a year ago, for reporting it to the Hokage, and for defeating someone who, by rank, was many times stronger than he was. Anger, anger at the Hokage for using Naruto as bait for a trap, at Mizuki for turning traitor and trying to kill Naruto, and at himself for not acting sooner to stop Mizuki going down that path. As for the shame, some of it was for not stopping Mizuki from turning traitor and attacking Naruto, but mostly. He was deeply ashamed of kicking Naruto's ass the previous night without listening to anything the boy said in his defense. Which was why he was here to apologize. Naruto, unfortunately, was pouting at him with a slight twitch in one eye, a largish bump on top of his head from the technique Uruka had used on him the previous day, the one his fellow Chunin sensei jokingly called the I no Ikatsu, roar of love, a loud shout, swiftly followed by teleporting in close with a shunshin and a heavy whack across the head. In the end, he'd had to promise to treat the boy to a couple of large bowls of ramen at Ikirikus before Naruto unbent enough to accept his apology. Anyway, Hokage-sama told me about everything that happened yesterday. Uruka told Naruto after he finished apologizing. And I am very impressed. You've really learned how to use your head rather than just relying on your fists. You not only quickly identified the suspicious actions of a supposed ally and brought them to your superior, but you even managed to successfully turn the trap back on Mizuki and learned a scroll's worth of jutsu to boot. All in all, a very impressive night's work Naruto. Hahaha, <laughs> hey, nothing to it but to do it, Uruka sensei Datbeo. Naruto grinned. Do you mind looking over the jutsu that I managed to learn last night and give me some pointers on them? Of course. While technically we're still teacher and student until you're officially been assigned to a Janin sensei, you're also technically a genin and not under the academy's authority any longer. So the law shouldn't be a problem. Uruka nodded. 
Chunin sensei weren't allowed to tutor their students outside of class in order to prevent favoritism, or at least heavily mitigate it, as teachers always tended to have favorites, regardless of policy. However once a student received their hitai 8 they fell into a bit of a legal gray area until the secondary genin exam administered by their assigned Jonin sensei. While he still couldn't privately teach Naruto any new techniques, offering critique and pointers on improving his already existent skills was well within the bounds. Yada. Naruto cheered. Smiling at his enthusiasm, Baruka followed the boy down to the apartment building's shuriken range and watched as Naruto demonstrated the jutsu he had learned the previous day, starting with the shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu. It took Aruka's mind a moment to reboot at the realization that his student had learned an A-ranked jutsu that even he couldn't use and, unfortunately, couldn't help him with. Fortunately, the rest were jutsu that the scarred Chunin knew and could give some quite useful pointers on. Posture and throwing technique for the cage shuriken no jutsu, for example, as well as a bit of improvement with directing the wires with the soshuriken no jutsu. He'd had to rack his brains for the shuriken goshin and shuriken ranbu jutsu since he'd learned those when he was just a fresh genin himself and it had been several years since he'd had to actively use them. I have to say, I'm impressed, Naruto. The chunin admitted a couple of hours later. Learning one, maybe two, of those jutsu in a single day is something that most experienced genin could accomplish, but all five over the course of a few hours. You've really been making amazing progress the last few months, but this is simply extraordinarily. Haruka was internally smirking as Naruto blushed and scratched the back of his head awkwardly as he was wont to do when he was praised, the poor boy wasn't used to people honestly praising him. As so Haruka sensei, how are the teams gonna be chosen? Naruto asked, strategically redirecting the conversation. Ordinarily, the class's various teachers would assign the teams based on a combination of requests from the Jonin sensei and their own observations on compatible skill sets and personal synergy. The Chunin replied, allowing the very obvious deflection to pass, this once. The only obvious odd one out would be pairing the rookie of the year, the top kunoichi and the lowest ranking class member together. The theory behind that being that the more skilled pair of genin will help to bring up the abilities of the less capable student. Naruto nodded, having heard that before from the Hokage himself. But this year, thanks to some, revelations, I understand that Hokage-sama is choosing the teams himself. Haruka continued more seriously. Standards have dropped at the academy, and I was so busy teaching that I didn't question the change in materials. You were just doing your job, Uruka sensei the boy protested. Hands down, you're the best sensei at the academy Dadbeo. Thanks, Naruto. The Chunin chuckled, honestly touched at the boy's high opinion of him. But I should have taken my concerns to the Hokage when they first happened. As it is, as I was the one to bring my worries about the traitor Mizuki to Hokage-sama's attention, I'm not going to be punished. Instead, from here on out, the entirety of the academy staff will be made to take at least one mission outside of Konoha every two weeks in order to impress upon us the realities of shinobi life and why some things need to be taught in the academy. Cool. So we may be on the same mission someday, the blonde smiled at that. Possibly. Uruka allowed. But most genin do basic D ranks inside of Konoha in order to build up experience at working as a team for quite some time before even high D ranks, like that escort mission that Ayame Chan left on to get ingredients, or made available to them. Air, aren't D ranks basically chump change missions? Naruto asked, looking concerned. How'll I pay my utilities with those? All shinobi of Konoha get a basic salary, depending on their rank and if they live with a clan or not in addition to their mission pay, Naruto. Uruka explained patiently. You'll have more than enough to pay for them. Plus, even if you only do one mission a day with your team, there's nothing stopping you from taking a solo mission so long as it's one that lone genin can take. That's a relief. Naruto sighed in relief. Wait, why would being in a clan affect your pay? If you're a part of an active shinobi clan, you generally have to offer up a portion of your pay as a tithe to help support the clan itself. In exchange, the clan generally provides a residence and general utilities and some other benefits for their shinobi. The Chunin told him. That ups the amount they receive slightly to accommodate for it. You, as another example, live alone, with no dependents or caregivers, so the amount you should receive is much higher. If you don't get any pay, let the Hokage know, okay? Gotcha, Baruka sensei Naruto agreed. 
By the way, can I get into the Genin's area of the library yet? Afraid not just yet. You have to be assigned to your Janin sensei and team before you're considered a fully qualified Genin. Baruka shook his head. Or rather, not until you pass your Janin sensei's test. He added silently. Ah man. How am I supposed to use my swords in any kind of real fight with only the self-taught CR? Crud I've been able to learn on my own. The boy grumbled. You can fight well enough without them, Naruto. Baruka laughed and ruffled the boy's hair again. Choosing to ignore the near miss, burning a wine in a pout from the blonde boy. Learning sword styles takes a lot more time than throwing shuriken or using a kanai. Even with your improvements, I doubt that a few extra days of training would change much in that area. Okay, I guess you're right, Baruka sensei, Naruto sighed. He was willing to bet his gamer abilities would prove that theory wrong, if he could use the damn thing. After chatting for a few more minutes, Baruka left to report to the Hokage. He'd been temporarily transferred to the Hokage's office as his assistant for mission assignments, which was actually a step up from being a teacher in both prestige and pay, until the new school year started in a few months and he was assigned a new class of shinobi aspirants. Naruto, left alone at last, eyed the stupid timer that only he could see, which was counting down to his gamer power coming back online fully. It had barely been 16 hours and he was going nuts wondering exactly why the hell his power needed to, version up, whatever the hell that was. Obviously it was some kind of update, but why couldn't it come out and say that? Stupid reality breaking power. Shrugging, the boy decided to go show off his Hitai 8 to Ayame, who was probably back from her errand by now. As he walked through Konoha, he mentally rolled his eyes at the increased angry glares that the villagers were giving him with the addition of his ninja headgear. Seriously, didn't they have anything better to do than increase the level of his detect bloodlust skill? Granted, it would be damned useful on missions outside of Konoha, but having to constantly deal with that little, mental nudge that someone, or rather a lot of someones, were glaring at him from multiple directions with the desire to kill was fairly distracting at first, disheartening after a while, and was currently more than a bit irritating. No sooner had he arrived at Ichiraku Ramen was he swept up in a glomp by a Yame, who was squealing about how proud she was of him for graduating at last. Naruto would have replied, but he was a bit busy suffocating from having his face plunged into his older sister figure's breasts. Ayame, you may want to let him go. Tiyuchi remarked in amusement. Otherwise we'll lose our best customer. Letting out a squeak of shock, the girl released a blue-faced Naruto, who started gulping in sweet, fresh air. S sorry, Naruto-kun, the brunette apologized, red-faced in embarrassment and mortification. It's, okay, ayame ne. Naruto replied after a moment. Just, try not to suffocate me again, nay. Sure thing. Now let me see this, Ayame peered at the hit I ate. Quote dot. Looks like Uruka-san did a good job of looking after it. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. Hehehe. <laughs> hey, hey. Naruto preened at the praise. No going back to the academy for me. Have an Uzumaki special on the house, Naruto. Tiyuchi said, placing a bowl on the counter. An Uzumaki special was, to put it simply, a large bowl with almost every ingredient you could put in ramen included, with an extra thick and nutritious soup. Not being one to pass up free food, especially Ichiraku ramen, Naruto sat down and tucked in with relish. As he ate, he felt completely at peace. Life was good. The next day, evening training room, a mechage apartments. Ding. Naruto, in the middle of practicing his throwing technique with a handful of kanai, winced at the sound of a bell going off right in his ear. The sudden noise also resulted in him fumbling the kanai he'd been readying, nearly impaling his foot. Yipe. What the, he looked around. Then he spotted the screen that had appeared. Finally. Welcome. Chosen gamer of your world, welcome to the gamer interface, version 2.0. As opposed to the version 1 and version 1.5 that you have worked with before now, this version of the GI has been optimized for your world and its peculiarities, powers and peoples. The following changes have been made to your interface. Experience gain for skill levels will now be rendered as a flat percentage to allow a greater ability to tell how far you are to progressing to the next level at a glance. Daily quests have been removed as a result of your advancement to the Genin class and title. They have been replaced by the repeatable quest D-Rank Drudgery. Achievements are now available. 
These are similar to titles in that your actions can unlock them, but they do not grant you any special abilities by possessing them, unless a title of the same name is unlocked at the same time. Although you do get rewards of EXP, Ryo and occasionally Jutsu, perks, flaws, special status, attribute points and ninja tools for them being awarded. Say, achievements, to have your past achievements cataloged and unlocked. The manner in which HP and CP is calculated has been altered to better represent the differences between different characters. HP is now calculated by multiplying a character's STR with their STA, while CP is calculated by multiplying your STA and WIS together and adding your STR and it afterwards. Any bonuses or modifiers to your HP and CP will then be added on. The number of skills per day you can learn via skill absorption has been increased from 3 to 5. The alignment system has been overhauled. Now actions taken can affect it, as well as words spoken. New alignments have been added. The Naruto Bingo book has been unlocked. In this section, information about people that you meet and fight is collated, including stats, skills, jutsu and allegiances. The class system has been restructured. Due to the idiosyncratic nature of your world, this is a lot less important than it would be elsewhere. A class usually dictates the sort of skills that a person can use, but as most people on your world are either samurai or ninja, a decision was made to have the classes mostly act as reinforcing your general chakra and weapons skills, with a few differing abilities thrown in here and there. These are the main upgrades to your interface, but the full list can be viewed at any time. New features added, on the other hand, are waiting to be discovered. Go forth and try to find them. Notice from the management. Please select from the three options below. This will be your free apology gift for the system going into version up mode so suddenly and without warning. Mastercrafted Konoha Chakra Blade Plus Mastercrafted Collapsible Spear Plus Custom Set of Shinobi Battle Armor Plus Feeling his eyes cross from the information overload, Naruto quickly tidied up his kanai and trotted up to his apartment to take it all in. It had been about time for him to call it a night anyway. Eyeing the changes in his living room, he shrugged his shoulders at the change from numbers to a flat percentage. It probably would be easier to tell how close he was getting to leveling up from here on out, but it wasn't an important change, ditto for the removal of daily quests. From the name of the title of the new repeatable quest, D ranks were the same thing by a different name. The only difference would be that he would actually be getting paid by Konoha for doing them. The achievements part looked interesting, so he opened the right page by saying, achievements, achievements and you, achievements are recognition by the system of you accomplishing a goal, be it so little as finishing basic training, to something as mighty as slaying a great enemy. Most achievements garner small rewards of EXP and Ryo for the one who receives them, but some do not due to their nature, while others will grant a title, special status, flaw, consequence, skill, jutsu scroll or object. Do you wish the gamer system to run through the core ADOS data of your life thus far and unlock the various achievements that you have rightly earned? Why, N, as if you even have to ask, the blonde boy scoffed, hitting, Y, without any hesitation. Running core ADOS scan, done. Chronicling achievements, done. Compiling system achievements matching, gamer, user's life achievements, done. Assigning awards, done. Displaying achievements now. Please note that some of these achievements are merely speaking after the fact. The power of human sacrifice, you have had the QB no Kitsune sealed within you, making you one of the nine Jinchuriki. Rewards, consequences, inability to go above, average chakra control, QB Jinchuriki, special status forced on you, QB Jinchuriki title made available. Pariah, you are shunned by the majority of people of your hometown due to them knowing of your secret, one you did not even know yourself until recently. Consequence. Pariah, flaw forced on you. Watcher from above, some entity is watching over you and others take note when that happens. Reward consequence. Perk, Benton's blessing, gifted to you, increased chances of running into spiritual entities. Three-time repeater, you have failed your graduation test twice and have gone through the academy's curriculum, as flawed as you now know it to be three times. Rewards. 100 EXP, 500 Ryo. King of pranksters, you are the acknowledged top prankster in all of Kanahagakur, even able to prank the Ansatsu Senjutsu Tokushu Butai, Anbu, and get away with it. Rewards. Granted, prankster king, special status. The orange menace, you are in possession of a set of loud orange clothing that is highly unlike anything worn by a real shinobi. 
while not exactly the kind of thing you should wear, in terms of training your stealth, if you can sneak around with this on, you can be almost impossible to find wearing real shinobi clothing. Reward Consequence Eyesore Flaw Forced on You Plus 50% to all stealth EXP gains while wearing aforementioned eyesore of an outfit. The gamer awakes, you have been selected as the gamer for your world. Reward The gamer title has been assigned to you, the gamer class has been assigned to you, the gamer has activated. The basics, you have learned the basics of the gamer. Reward. 200 EXP. Coached by a dolphin, Yumino Uruka has given you a revision lesson to repair your damaged foundation of shinobi knowledge. Reward. 100 EXP. An affinity for destruction, you have discovered your first two elemental affinities. Reward. Futon. Kudan, Jutsu Scroll. Doden, Dosekadake, Jutsu Scroll. Landlord, you have been given control of a block of apartments, meaning you have to maintain them, as well as collect the rent. Good luck with that last one. Reward. Rent money. Taking a boss like a boss, you have defeated a boss monster. Well done you. Reward. Plus 500 EXP, plus 2 attribute points. Clanning up, you have discovered you are a member of a clan. Rewards. Granted special status. Member of the Uzumaki clan, and perk. Loyalty. Target, at least 200 people have directed killing intent at you within a 48 hour period. You may want to avoid them. Reward. Detect killing intent, skill scroll. Karma is a pain, you have made your first karmic alignment choice. Remember, what goes around, comes around. Rewards. 500 EXP. First kill, you have taken your first life at the tender age of 12. What a world. Reward 500 EXP. One man platoon, you have faced a platoon of enemies by yourself and emerged victorious with help from their own stupidity, of course. Go you. Reward. Plus 5 dex, plus 5 attribute points. The truth, you confronted your surrogate grandfather regarding the truth of your status as a Jinchuriki. Remember that the truth doesn't always set you free. Reward. Perfect Jinchuriki host perk. Bring in a bounty, you have captured a nuke nin of your home village and handed them in. Reward. Bounty hunter title. Third times the charm, you have finally graduated from the academy. About damn time. Reward. Kanahagakur Legacy Hitai 8, Genin, class available, Genin, title available. Again, the information overload was quite bad, so Naruto closed the window and resolved to go over it later in more detail. The next thing he did was pull up his status screen. He wanted to see what the heck his stats looked like now. Name. Uzumaki Naruto class, the gamer, plus, level. 17, next level. 61.12% title. Genin, plus 15% EXP to LB25 plus, age, 12 HP, 4108-4108 CP, 4061-4061 STR, 43 STA, 46 plus 10, Dex, 45 Int, 41 plus 5, Wis, 37. Luck, Attribute Points, 7 Special Status, Member of the Uzumaki Clan, Passive, plus 5, Int, Plus 1 O, Sta, plus 15% EXP to Fuenjutsu, skill, QB Jinchuriki, passive, plus 100, HP, plus 100, CP per level, Prankster King, passive, minus 15% to reputation gains within Kanahagakur, plus 10% to EXP gains in trap, and, stealth, skills. Perks. Benton's Blessing, Outside the Box, Loyalty, Perfect Jinchuriki Host Flaws, Pariah, Headstrong, Man, the new way of calculating my HP and CP rocks. Naruto remarked, boggling at the way his HP and CP had almost doubled since the last time he'd checked. It really showed how far he'd come since he'd first opened up his status screen just a few months ago. Another irritating, ding, rang out all of a sudden. Many apologies due to the abrupt and disruptive nature of the, version up, two achievements were missed by the core Eidos scan. Displaying now. Shadow Master, you are the acknowledged master of the Shadow Clone Jutsu, having created more at once than any other person since its creation. Senju Tobarama would be proud. Reward. Shadow Master Perk. Deep Chakra Well, you unleashed an amazing amount of chakra, tapping deep into your burgeoning reserves in a moment of great anger and stress, resulting in improvements to your chakra network and chakra coils. Reward. 
Permanent increase of plus 500, CP. Effective special status, QB Jinchuriki, CP increase doubled from here on out. And that was a thing, apparently. Was there more than one, being, interfering in his life? The, watcher from above, achievement certainly seemed to lean in that direction. Let's see what all of these new perks of mine do, Naruto muttered. Loyalty, passive, your natural disposition is to be very loyal to those you deem worthy of it, as well as to your clan and family. People who know of this loyalty reciprocate it, mostly. There are always outliers. Grants plus 10% reputation gain with those who know of the reason for your loyalty. There is a variable chance for someone to not be affected by this perk if they believe they have a good reason to do so. The variable is calculated by various factors, such as your reputation with them, your home village, their home village and a host of other reasons too numerous to list. Perfect Jinchuriki host passive, you are descended from the Uzumaki clan, which is known for the exceptionally strong life force and powerful, dense chakra of their clansmen. Combined with their descent from the, redacted, this makes them, and by extension you, perfectly suited to host one of the nine biju. This means that if you hadn't had the QB sealed within you as a baby, you would be able to have it sealed within you right this instant without any negative effects on your health. For your information, most people would have their chakra coils shattered and die from chakra poisoning if even the weakest of the biju was sealed within them after a certain age without the assistance of an extremely strong, specialized sealing technique. Even then, negative health effects later in life would have been highly likely. You have a 100% internal resistance to the chakra of the QB no Yoko within you. To anyone else, it is utter poison and will kill anyone affected by it in a very painful manner if injected into their chakra network. When fully manifested outside the chakra network, you will still have to worry about its corrosive effects, so proceed with caution. Shadow Master, passive, you have mastered the notoriously chakra-intensive cage bunshin no jutsu beyond any previous user. Not even the Nadaim Hokage could use his own creation to the degree that you do. To reflect this fairly impressive feat, you receive the following bonuses to the Shadow Clone Jutsu. For every clone's worth of CP spent, two clones are created. You recover all CP spent as stated above every time two clones are destroyed. You have a bonus plus 30% chance to intuit and create Jutsu using the Cage Bunch and No Jutsu depending on the situation around you. It now takes two strikes from an enemy to dispel a cage bunshin unless the hit is to a fatal location. That was all very interesting. What piqued Naruto's interest was that there was a redacted name there. Who were the Uzumaki descended from that the system actually had to censor their name? Duh, it's because I don't know them. He thought a moment later with a mental smack to his head. Obviously the system couldn't give him clues to people he didn't already know or had heard about. He would probably find out from his Gigi after he met his Jonan instructor the next day. Closing the status window, he eyed the three choices of items offered by the management, whoever the hell they were, as an apology. He knew that he would have to choose carefully here, so he viewed the two that he was more likely to choose. Mastercrafted Konoha Chakra Blade Kanahagakur produces standard issue chakra blades for use by their shinobi forces. A very rare few are created by master blacksmiths which surpass their lesser cousins, designed for use by the village's elite forces. Resembling a larger, more elongated type of kanai, but more akin to a sword, these blades are inscribed with the spiral leaf symbol of Kanahagakur at the base of the blade. LV-17 Mastercrafted, Short Weapon, Chakra Weapon Durability 220-220 Piercing Damage, S1.5 Slashing Damage, S plus 2O bludgeoning damage, S special ability, chakra sword form, this blade is made from chakra conductive metal and inscribed with intricate fuenjutsu. This allows the wielder to channel chakra through it to form a sword that increases its length and damage considerably. When in chakra sword form, the weapon counts as a standard length sword, it can sever chakra threads and its damage chart changes to this, piercing, S3, slashing, S plus 4O, bludgeoning, S. Mastercrafted collapsible spear created by those who wished to use a long weapon without having the burdensome problem of carrying their full size around all the time or sealing it away, the spear more closely resembles a knife in its collapsed form. When extended, it resembles a standard suyari. While useful, its collapsible nature does make it a great deal more fragile than a true spear. LV-17 durability. 100 100 both forms. Mastercrafted collapsed form. Short weapon extended form. 
polearm piercing damage. C. S plus 15E. S2.5 slashing damage. C. S plus 10E. S plus 2O bludgeoning damage. C. S. E. S plus 15. Special ability. Extend and collapse the user can change the form of this weapon between collapsed form and extended form. It takes 3 seconds to change from collapsed to extended but 30 seconds to go from extended to collapsed. The armor he didn't bother with looking at. While cool looking, there was a reason that the old plate metal armor had been phased out in favor of the flak jackets worn by the Chunin and Jonin these days. While the old school plate armor offered superior protection to both the main body and limbs, it was heavier and restricted the user's movements too much for any but the most well-trained shinobi to use. The flak jackets protected most of the wearer's vitals while still allowing full mobility and a wide range of motion. There isn't really a choice, is there? Naruto asked rhetorically as he selected the chakra blade. He wasn't someone who used polearms, and he couldn't think of any ninja who did, either. Even hammers and axes were more common than spears among ninja. Reaching into his inventory, he pulled out his new blade and tested out its balance with a few swings. It was perfect. He'd have to go to Higurashi's early tomorrow to get his hands on a sheath or holster for it. He wasn't about to carry a sword he couldn't use in combat Kogetsu Kyushiki around, so this would have to do until he could use it. Better still, as it was a short weapon, he could use it and say that he could because it was so similar to a kunai. Letting out a jaw-cracking yawn, Naruto opened up his status screen again and dumped four points into his wis and the last three into his str. It wouldn't change his HP and CP by too much, but every little helps. Bed. I have a big day tomorrow. Naruto muttered before tottering off into his room. Even with how tired he was all of a sudden, his excitement at what awaited him the next day kept him up for a good hour after retiring. The next day classroom, Kanahagakur Ninja Academy entering the classroom in his light combat outfit, Naruto smirked as he made his way up to his usual seat in the classroom and sat down. No matter what happened today, there was no chance that he'd come down off of cloud 9. He had finally graduated. Casting his eyes about, one eyebrow raised as he noticed the strongest ones in the class mostly clan heirs were all present. Hayuga Hanada LV15, Shy Maiden, Hayuga Eris, Yamanaka Ino LV15, Yamanaka Eris, Mindwalker Adept. Haruno Sakura LV15, Haruno Eris, Brainiac, Uchiha Sasuke LV15, Last Loyal Uchiha, Emo Avenger, Inazuka Kiba LV15, Inazuka Air, Aspiring Alpha Male, Abarame Shino LV15, Abarame Air, Silent Watcher. Akamichi Choji LV15, Akamichi Air, Nara Shikamaru LV15, Nara Air, Lazy Genius, all of them were level 15 and everyone but Choji had two titles that he could see. That last part was something new. Must be because of the version up or something, as when he'd looked at them before the change, he'd only seen one. Other than the ninja-born students, Sakura and himself, almost none of the rest were at the academy student level cap. Oh, one or two were, but almost all of them were in the 9 to 11 range, with some being level 8, the lazy bastards. What the hell had they been doing, playing old maid instead of training? He made a note to have a word with his Gigi about the ones who had actually put in an effort. They didn't deserve to be bored out of their minds for another year if they failed because of their teammates being lazy. Some of the welcome changes to the classroom mostly revolved around Sakura and Ino not getting into catfights at every possible opportunity, instead, they, sparred, at least once a week, to the point that Aruka had to step in as referee. They weren't actually angry or hateful towards each other, but they did get out of hand, exchanging pointers, with one another. At least they're half-decent at taijutsu now. Naruto thought smugly. He shuddered at how easily he had beaten Sakura way back just after he'd gotten the gamer. Now she was more than able to hold her own, although she could definitely use a taijutsu style that wasn't as widely known as the hawkage style was. Alright class, quiet down. Haruka walked into the classroom with papers under his arm as always, which struck Naruto with a bit of sad nostalgia that he wouldn't see the man do that anymore. Looking around the classroom at the faces of his latest students, the scarred Chunin felt the familiar sadness of seeing his students move on. Of course, most would be back thanks to the tests administered by the Jonin Sensei, but the ones who had the most potential out of all of them, the clan kids plus Sakura and Naruto, were the ones who he had interacted with and knew the most. For a variety of reasons. 
Read. Naruto and his pranks, Kiba, Choji and Shikamaru joining him on occasion to bunk out of class, Sakura and Ino for fighting over Sasuke, that sort of thing, now class, this is the last day you will be in this class, as you have all graduated. He started. I am very proud of you, but unfortunately, new information has come to light regarding various members of staff altering the curriculum to allow more civilian students to pass. The whispering started up, as expected. Shikamaru, despite his lazy posture, sharpened his gaze as he stared at Aruka, while most of the rest of the class looked surprised. There were two notable exceptions however, Sasuke looked angry, while Naruto was somewhat indifferent, already knowing about it from the Hokage. Quiet please. Aruka called out in a monotone. Once they settled down, he continued in a more lively tone. I am unfortunately guilty of not noticing it happening, for which you all have my apologies. Due to the changes discovered, the Hokage has decreed that anyone who returns to the academy following today shall be put through an intensive six-month catch-up course before being tested again. This is regardless of how many attempts you have had before now, so all of you repeaters can rest easy. A couple of the civilian kids looked relieved. For those of you who remain a shinobi, the standard one squad model is being modified. The scarred Chunin continued. Due to the wide gap in what you have been taught to what you should have been taught, the teams will be grouped into a genin platoon, where you will cross-train with each other's Jonin sensei to fill in the gaps of what you should have been taught. An older genin squad, the former Team 9, now called Team Guy, will also be included as they are the only genin squad active from last year's graduates. Questions. Shikamaru. Exactly what have we not been taught, the lazy boy drawled. To give an example, the only graduate in your class present who has blooded themselves against chakra mutations is Uzumaki Naruto. Uruka stated with a shrug. The number of changes made to the curriculum is numerous and while some are obvious in hindsight, several were quite subtle. Those of you from a clan shouldn't be in any need to worry, it is the civilian born who are really affected by this interference. Was it the teachers who did it or were they bribed to do it? The Nara heir asked cynically. I am not at liberty to discuss it, Shikamaru. Haruka replied, before adding in a bland voice, on a completely unrelated note, several prominent businessmen have been arrested as of a few hours ago. Whatever might they be accused of, I wonder. That got a few laughs from the kids, although a couple paled at the implication. Let's see, ah, uh, yes. Haruka looked around at the students seriously. The teams that you are currently being assigned are temporary and will be changed to better suit everyone's abilities once you are up to standard. The teams are currently dividing you by what you need help with most, be it taijutsu, genjutsu, ninjutsu or whatever your greatest weakness is currently. Please try to get along with whomsoever you are assigned with, as we emphasize teamwork here at the academy for a reason. There, that should be enough of a hint for them. I'll now start reading out your assigned teams. They aren't up for debate, nor can they be changed until the Hokage says otherwise, so no complaining, I'm looking at you, Kiba. Uruka said quellingly. What? The Inazuka said foe innocently. Akamaru, sat on his head, yipped something that made the boy roll his eyes. Whatever, Akamaru. Shaking his head, the Chunin started reading out a team number, three student names followed by the name of a Jonin. Most of the Jonin sensei were unknowns, so there was no reaction to their names. I wonder what Naruto's reaction will be to his sensei. Uruka wondered. Naruto tuned Uruka out once he started listing teams made up of civilians. His eyes wandered over the students who were named. Most were around about the same level, with the three civilians who were level 15 grouped together. If he were a betting man, Naruto would bet that they'd pass. Team 7. Uchiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba and Abarame Shino, under John and Hata K. Kakashi. Uruka announced. Team 8. Hayuga Hanada, Akamichi Choji and Nara Shikamaru, under John and Yuhi Kuranai. Team 9 is still on the rolls from last year. Team 10. Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura and Yamanaka Ino, under Serutobi Asuma. There were a variety of reactions to the teams. Sasuke merely grunted, while Kiba groaned and Shino adjusted his glasses. Hanada looked disappointed, while Choji ate more snacks and Shikamaru rolled his eyes and muttered, troublesome, under his breath. Sakura and Ino simultaneously smacked themselves on their foreheads with a groan. Naruto, on the other hand, was delighted. He had Asuma for his sensei and Sakura-chan as his teammate. He let out a whoop of joy. 
Best. Squad. Ever. Why am I with Sasuke? Kiba demanded. You lack discipline, Kiba. Haruka explained. Sasuke doesn't subordinate well and Shino isn't sociable. You'll be forced to work on these aspects together. And, before anyone else asks, Hinata, Choji and Shikamaru are together because the first two lack confidence, while Shikamaru lacks a drive to succeed, all of which can be worked on. Haruka added. Naruto lacks the ability to work with Genjutsu, while Ino and Sakura need to work on their Taijutsu and Ninjutsu outside of the Academy 3 and Traveling 10. Their team was put together to try and teach each other their strong points. Despite the grumbles, most of the graduates seemed resigned to the team makeups. Your Jonin sensei will pick you up here after lunch, so be sure to return in time. He said severely before he smiled. You all dismissed, and I wish you all the best of luck in your careers as shinobi of the leaf. As the kids filed out of the class in their teens, Naruto looked over and saw Sakura and Ino glowering at each other. Wincing, he decided to drag the pair of them to Ikirikus to maybe bond over food or something. Anything was better than this silent cold war going on between them. Lunch is on me, he said as he latched onto an arm apiece as he walked past them. You don't mind ramen, do you? Wah. Hey, let go, Naruto. Sakura yelped in surprise as she was dragged behind him. What she said, Ino added, trying in vain to get him to let go of her. No, if I do that, you'll just go back to scowling at each other. The blonde boy shook his head firmly, dragging both along. There were some advantages to having two female teammates that were very lightly built. I could swear I heard a rumor about your face sticking like that if the wind changed or something. And that would be a crying shame. That's a saying, Naruto. The pinket corrected him, giving up on getting him to let her go. The blonde menace was surprisingly strong for such a shrimp. Parents say that to their kids to get them to stop pulling faces. Looks like it didn't work with you too, what with the scowling you were both doing a minute ago. He shot back easily, keeping up the back and forth banter as he dragged them to his favorite eatery in the entire village, Naruto knew that getting these two to get along wouldn't be easy. Same time Hokage's office, well that was unexpected. Asuma remarked. The former Guardian Ninja 12 member stood in his father's office, watching as two members of his future team were dragged by the last one through Konoha. I half expected the girls to start a catfight or something. Naruto-kun has been something of a stabilizing influence on those two over the last few months. Here is an answer as Team 10 reached Ikirikus. Cancelling his Tomegan no Jutsu as Naruto started to order, the old Hokage activated the security seals. So, have you managed to suspend your disbelief regarding Naruto-kun's power, yet? Somewhat. The bearded man admitted reluctantly. It would explain how he's improved by leaps and bounds over the last eight months, and how he's learned so many jutsu. Aye, it's just, a power that treats the world like an RPG. Seriously. So he's not progressed as far as I would like, but further than I anticipated. His father concluded. Initially, when the Hokage had told Asuma about Naruto's gamer power, the other man had thought that his father had been putting him on as some form of payback. Understandable, really, considering that Hiruzen himself would have had a hard time believing it in the other man's place had he not had the Anbu reports regarding Naruto somehow absorbing scrolls and books. Yes, Asuma, I am being serious here. He sighed. Naruto-kun showed it to me directly and I used every trick in the book to break Genjutsu, along with several that have never been physically recorded. Only for them to have absolutely no effect. Either Naruto-kun has discovered or developed an SSS ranked Genjutsu of the same sort as those cast by the Uchiha's Mangekio Sharingan kaleidoscope copy Wheel I, and has somehow mastered it without anyone in the village noticing, or he is legitimately in possession of a power that allows him to act as an RPG character in one of those newfangled electronic games. Despite himself, Asuma had to laugh. Konohamaru, his nephew and the Hokage's grandson, had crowed for days about beating his grandfather in some kind of one-on-one -on -one fighting game on the console called the Nintendo Ninja Way of Heaven. Yeah, well, it's still hard to swallow, Oyaji. The bearded man grumbled. And why me? I thought you would give Naruto to Kakashi. Because Kakashi would either ignore the power and try to make Naruto-kun ignore it as well, or he would try to get Naruto to share the benefits with his teammates in the name of teamwork, neither of which is a good idea. Serutobi said seriously. 
Danzo already sent men after Naruto-kun earlier on this year and that was simply because of his status as the Jinchuriki of the Kyuubi. News of this latest power of his could make my old teammate lose any restraint he has left in order to acquire the boy. Asuma grimaced. Yeah, guy was telling me a while back about Naruto standing beside Tenten, in a most youthful manner, against those, nuke nin that made it inside Konoha. Why would ignoring it be a bad idea? Naruto-kun showed me the introduction message that his power showed him when he first got a handle on it. Hiruzen replied. It stated that those who ignored the power usually didn't last very long. Or something along those lines, anyway. That isn't something I'd like to take a chance with regarding Naruto-kun. Adding to that, ignoring such an advantageous ability would not only be wasteful but the height of folly. Hiruzen huffed on his pipe slightly. A ninja is one who uses every advantage at their disposal. That was one of the first lesson Toborama sensei taught us. I can accept Kakashi's desire to maintain equality among his students, but I will not allow it to hinder one of my shinobi's growth. Fair points pops. The younger Serutobi conceded, knowing better that to argue with his father, particularly when he mentioned the Nadaim. So what's the next big announcement you have to make, Oyaji? You said yesterday that you were going to announce something to the genin once they pass the real genin exam. I've passed something I call the, genin housing act, which mandates that all genin newly graduated from the academy have to move out of their parents houses and clan compounds to somewhere approved by the hokage in order to better learn how to balance a budget and live independently. Hiruzen smirked. As it so happens, the only place that has my approval is the Amekage apartments. Clever, very clever. Asuma nodded, his time in the capital, where political intrigue and backroom dealing were daily occurrences, allowing the calculus of that decision to unfold in his mind. I stay there and so does Naruto. Having seven clan heirs and heiresses, plus the last loyal Uchiha live with the Kyuubi Jinchuriki under the supervision of your own son will show everyone how seriously you are treating this law, and the presence of so many in one concentrated location will allow you to keep several Anbu teams constantly stationed in the area, which will keep Danzo and his ilk from getting any more stupid ideas. I have to wonder how you got Hayuga Hiyashi to sign off on it though. By pointing out that Hinata-chan will be just as safe in the Amekage apartments as in the Hayuga compound, if not safer. The Hokage replied calmly. The Anbu Corps may not have any Hayuga, even branch family Hayuga, in their ranks, but they are far more capable as guards and sentries than Hayuga clansmen. Part of their duties involves protecting the most vital locations in Konoha, after all. That made Asuma nod. As good as he knew he was, even after his long stint as a glorified bodyguard to the fire daimyo, the younger Serutobi knew that against even one squad of Anbu, he would be hard-pressed to hold them off, let alone win. The plan that his father had for the Amekage apartments would have it ringed by five squads at all hours of the day and night. That was just a single squad less than the number on patrol in and around the Hokage Tower itself. Well then, looks like things are going to get interesting indeed. The bearded man muttered before he looked at the clock. Huh, almost time. I'd better go and pick up my new squad. Wish me luck, Oyaji. I doubt you'll need it, Naruto-kun knows you and isn't likely to pull in pranks on you, yet. The Sandame smirked at his son, who hid a slight flinch of concern. As his son left the room following the deactivation of the security seals, Serutobi leaned back in his chair and sighed. Getting the GHA through the council hadn't been quite as easy as he had made it sound, mostly because of the Inoshika Cho's wives coming and nagging at him. Gods, getting Nara Yoshino to stand down had been more strenuous than most of the fights he had taken part in during the prime of his life. Unexpectedly, Yamanaka Sori had been the first to agree with him that it was needed after he explained his own arguments and answered a few questions, with Akamichi Cho's wife falling in shortly afterwards. Under pressure from her two friends in her cage, Yoshino had finally surrendered under the condition that she would visit her son weekly to make sure he wasn't falling into bad habits. Well now, let's see what you'll do now, Naruto-kun. The old cage murmured, once again activating the Tomegan no Jutsu and peering into the crystal ball, seeing Naruto walking back to the academy with Sakura and Ino following behind him, this time without the blonde boy dragging them by the arms. The old man smirked as he settled in to watch what he was certain would be a good show. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author.
See you guys in the next video.